Do you feel like you don't speak enough French? That you need to know more words? Then stick around. With these lessons, you'll pick up some of the most common words in just a few minutes. Now, this video is a small portion of our learning program. To get the full lessons, translations, and fluency fast study tools, click the link in the description and sign up for your free lifetime account. Hi, welcome to Introduction to French. My name is Alicia and I'm joined by... Hi everyone, I'm Candice. In this series, you'll learn everything you need to know to get started learning French. That's right, and we're here to help guide you through your journey. In this lesson, you'll learn the reasons why you should start learning a new language, why you should learn French in particular, and how to get started. There are countless reasons, but perhaps the biggest one of all is that it could actually change your life. Learning a new language unlocks new pathways that are off limits to you now. There are certain things that you simply cannot do without having the technical or cultural skills that come from learning a new language. Like working or living in another country. Knowing another language provides you with greater job opportunities. You have the freedom to move to another country halfway around the world and be able to earn a living, or even better yet, build a career from it, instead of just being stuck in one place. Language allows you to visit or live in places that you may never have even considered going, simply because that wasn't a possibility for you. Knowing another language simply gives you more options to choose from. And learning a new language also helps you to be more open-minded and see the world from a new perspective. Language and culture go hand in hand. The world is a big place, and by broadening your understanding of other cultures, it allows you to be more empathetic and understanding of the many different ways that people live their lives. With language, you're able to see and experience more, which helps you to grow as a person. Learning a new language also improves your memory. Several studies have consistently shown that those who study another language have improved memory, as opposed to those who didn't learn another language. Learning another language also keeps your brain healthy by significantly delaying the onset of Alzheimer's and dementia. This difference can be as much as four to five more years of quality life. And those are just some of the reasons you should learn another language. The list just goes on and on. Now you know the benefits of studying another language, but why should you learn French in particular? A good portion of the world speaks French. In fact, over 200 million people speak French across five continents. French is spoken in many countries around the world, and it's an official language in many countries, like Belgium, the Seychelles, Canada, Cameroon, and many more. Moreover, French is the second most widely learned foreign language after English, so the number of speakers is growing rapidly. It's currently the ninth most spoken language in the world. And what about the fact that France is the sixth largest economy in the world? The aerospace industry in France is huge. There's a special cluster of aerospace engineering companies and research centers in France called the Aerospace Valley. And of course, French wines are a lucrative industry as well, not to mention perfumes and cosmetics. Knowing French then opens up many career and business opportunities for you. If you want to visit France, you must be warned. The majority of French citizens do not like or aren't able to speak English. Even in tourist places like Paris, if you make an effort to speak French and to learn their culture, however, you will be much more warmly welcomed. Learning French will help you during your trip, even if you're a beginner. French people will treat you much more nicely. Okay then, we've talked about why you should start learning a language and why you should start learning French, but how can you get started, Candice? Well, it's as simple as learning your first word in French and building up from there. The good news, though, is that you already know some French. Mirage, façade, encore, souvenir. These are all French words that you will easily recognize because these words exist in English, too. This is because both English and French are derived from Latin. In fact, roughly 30% of all English words used today share their origins with French words. Not only this, but there are also English loan words used in French. Words such as babysitter, bacon, weekend, super, are all English words that are used in French on a daily basis. This means that you already know a very large portion of French vocabulary. Yes, that's right. So learning French is much easier than you think. Okay, let's teach you something that you might not know, but it's very useful. Merci. It means thank you in French. 
It's one of the most basic phrases and perhaps one of the most useful phrases for you to learn. Merci. Now you try. Merci. One more time. Merci. You can also add beaucoup to add greater emphasis. Merci beaucoup. Try it. Merci beaucoup. One last time. Merci beaucoup. Well done. Now you know how to say thank you in French. We've covered a lot of things already, so why don't we wrap up the first lesson and recap what we've learned. In this lesson, you learned that studying another language has many benefits, such as providing new job and business opportunities. Learning French will allow you to experience more of the culture. And to say thank you in French, it's... Merci. Or merci beaucoup. In the next lesson, we're going to take a look at the basics of French pronunciation, so be sure to watch the next video. See you in the next lesson. Bye! Bye! In this video, you'll learn 20 of the most common words and phrases in French. Hi everybody, my name is Leah. Welcome to the 800 core French word and phrases video series. This series will teach you the 800 most common words and phrases in French. But there is a twist. With each new lesson in the series, we'll include the previous lessons at the end. So, after you learn the new words and phrases, stick around and review what you learned in previous lessons. Reviewing is one of the most important parts of learning a language. You can also get the full list right now at frenchpod101.com. Click the link in the description to access more example sentences, create your own flashcard deck, and finally master French. Okay, let's get started. First is... Poil à frire Frying pan Poil à frire Poil à frire Frying pan La poêle à frire est vraiment pas chère. This frying pan is very cheap. La poêle à frire est vraiment pas chère. Planche à découper. Cutting board. Planche à découper. Planche à découper. Cutting board. Le cuisinier coupe un œuf dur sur la planche à découper. The cook is cutting a hard-boiled egg on the cutting board. Le cuisinier coupe un œuf dur sur la planche à découper. Évier. Sink. Évier. Évier. Sink. L'évier est presque plein. The sink is almost full. L'évier est presque plein. Bol. 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 Le bol est vide. The bowl is empty. Le bol est vide. Sortie. Exit. Sortie. Sortie. Exit. Où est la sortie? Where is the exit? Où est la sortie? Plan. Map. Plan. Plan. Map. Regarde le plan pour trouver le chemin de ta destination. Check the map to find your way to your destination. Regarde le plan pour trouver le chemin de ta destination. Valise. Suitcase, valise, valise, suitcase. 
Ne laissez pas des objets de valeur dans votre valise. Do not leave valuables in your suitcase. Ne laissez pas des objets de valeur dans votre valise. Touriste. Tourist. Touriste. Touriste. Tourist. Les touristes lézardent sur la plage. Tourists are enjoying their free time on the beach. Les touristes lézardent sur la plage. Politique. Politics. Politique. Politique. Politics. Je fais un blog sur la politique et l'économie. I blog about politics and the economy. Je fais un blog sur la politique et l'économie. Biologie. Biology. Biologie. Biologie. Biology. La biologie est l'étude des organismes vivants. Biology is the study of living organisms. La biologie est l'étude des organismes vivants. Chimie. Chemistry. Chimie. Chimie. Chemistry. Elle est mauvaise en chimie. She is bad in chemistry. Elle est mauvaise en chimie. Physique. Physics. Physique. Physique. Physics. Je connais les bases de la physique. I know the basis of physics. Je connais les bases de la physique. Économie. Economics. Économie. Économie. Economics. Dans cette université, les cours d'économie sont excellents. In this university, the economics courses are excellent. Dans cette université, les cours d'économie sont excellents. Maître. Put. Maître. Maître. Put. Je vais mettre les fleurs sur la table. I will put the flowers on the table. Je vais mettre les fleurs sur la table. Se rappeler. Remember. Se rappeler. Se rappeler. Remember. Je ne me rappelle de rien. I don't remember anything. Je ne me rappelle de rien. Tenir. Hold. Tenir. Tenir. Hold. Les ceintures, c'est fait pour tenir les pantalons. Belts are made to hold your pants. Les ceintures, c'est fait pour tenir les pantalons. Caddie. Shopping cart. Caddie. Caddie. Shopping cart. Le caddie est vide. The shopping cart is empty. Le caddie est vide. Sac plastique. Plastic bag. 
sac plastique. Sac plastique. Plastic bag. L'homme porte un sac plastique rempli de courses. The man is carrying a plastic bag full of groceries. L'homme porte un sac plastique rempli de courses. Comédie. Comedy. Comédie. Comédie. Comedy. J'adore voir des comédies parce que j'adore rire. I love to watch comedy because I love to laugh. J'adore voir des comédies parce que j'adore rire. Roman. Novel. Roman. Roman. Novel. J'aime les romans à suspense. I like suspense novels. J'aime les romans à suspense. Well done! In this lesson, you expanded your vocabulary and learned 20 new useful words. Click the link in the description and sign up for free at frenchpod101.com to get access to the full list of vocabulary you need for daily life conversations. You'll also get example sentences, custom flashcard decks, and more learning resources. See you next time! Au revoir! Now, if you're wondering how to remember these words forever so that you can start speaking more and more, here's how. 1. Review them with our spaced repetition flashcards. Our flashcards will drill these words into your long-term memory. 2. Save the words to our word bank, your personal collection of words, where you can print out physical study sheets. And 3. Watch our looped vocabulary slideshows on repeat until you understand every word. You'll find these tools inside our learning program. Just click the link in the description to get them. In this video, you'll learn 20 of the most common words and phrases in French. Hi everybody, my name is Lia. Welcome to the 800 core French word and phrases video series. This series will teach you the 800 most common words and phrases in French. But there is a twist. With each new lesson in this series, we'll include the previous lesson at the end. So after you learn the new words and phrases, stick around and review what you learned in previous lessons. Reviewing is one of the most important parts of learning a language. You can also get the full list right now at frenchpod101.com. Click the link in the description to access more example sentences, create your own flashcard deck, and finally master French. Okay, let's get started. First is... Rire. Laugh. Rire. Rire. Laugh. Le couple rit à une blague. The couple is laughing at a joke. Le couple rit à une blague. Délicieux. Delicious. Délicieux. Délicieux. Delicious. Dessert délicieux. Delicious desserts. Dessert délicieux. Eau. Water. Eau. Eau. Water. Puis-je avoir de l'eau, s'il vous plaît? Can I have some water, please? Puis-je avoir de l'eau, s'il vous plaît? T. 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 Tasse de thé. Cup of tea. Tasse de thé. Café. Coffee. 
café, café, coffee, café frais, freshly brewed coffee, café frais, bière, beer, bière, Bière. Beer. Bière fraîche. Cold beer. Bière fraîche. Vin. Wine. Vin. Vin. Wine. Verre de vin. Glass of wine. Verre de vin. Bœuf. Beef. Bœuf. Bœuf. Beef. Steak de bœuf. Beef steak. Steak de bœuf. Poulet. Chicken. Poulet. Poulet. Chicken. Poulet rôti. Roast chicken. Poulet rôti. Porc. Pork. Porc. Porc. Pork. Le porc est la viande de cochon. Pork is meat from a pig. Le porc est de la viande de cochon. Poisson. Fish. Poisson. Poisson. Fish. Le thon est un poisson de mer. Tuna is a saltwater fish. Le thon est un poisson de mer. Agneau. Lamb. Agneau. Agneau. Lamb. L'agneau, c'est énormément délicieux. Lamb is extremely delicious. L'agneau, c'est énormément délicieux. Docteur. 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 Si tu tombes malade, va chez le docteur. If you get sick, go to the doctor. Si tu tombes malade, va chez le docteur. Officier de police. Police officer. Officier de police. Officier de police. Police officer. Officier de police en uniforme. Police officer in uniform. Officier de police en uniforme. Professeur. Teacher. Professeur. Professeur. Teacher. Professeur d'anglais. English teacher. Professeur d'anglais. Employé. Employee. Employé. Employé. Employee. 
Profit des employés. Employee benefits. Profit des employés. Venir. Come. Venir. Venir. Come. Venir à la maison. Come home. Venir à la maison. Regardez. Si. Regardez. Regardez. Si. Voir un coucher de soleil. Si a sunset. Voir un coucher de soleil. Faire. Make. Faire. Faire. Make. Le chef fait du jus d'orange. The chef makes orange juice. Le chef fait du jus d'orange. Utiliser. Use. Utiliser. Utiliser. Use. Le programmeur a utilisé l'ordinateur. The programmer used the computer. Le programmeur a utilisé l'ordinateur. Remember. The goal of this series is to build the vocabulary of the 800 most common words and phrases in French. If that sounds like a lot, don't worry, we can help you. Click the link in the description to access the full list. You also get example sentences, custom flashcard decks, and more learning resources at frenchpod101.com. See you next time! Au revoir! Hi, watchers! Are you coming to France soon? Because this week we are going to learn about 20 travel phrases you should know. Merci, thank you. Anytime you receive something or someone was nice to you. Merci, thank you. Excusez-moi, excuse me. Anytime you bump into someone or if you step on the foot because the metro is crowded or if you need to call for the waiter's attention, use this one. Excusez-moi, combien ça coûte? How much is this? Yeah, sometimes you won't find the prices on the items you are looking for, especially if you are going to a flea market in France. So just go, ah, this item, how much is it? Cet objet, combien ça coûte? Où est la gare? Where is the train station? This one can be quite convenient. If you are in a big city, where is the metro? Où est le métro? Le wifi est-il gratuit? Is the wifi free? If you want Wi-Fi in France, maybe some coffee shops now have it. They advertise it on the chalkboard outside. So come inside, we have Wi-Fi. Je voudrais ceci. I'd like this. Oh, I'd like this, please. Je voudrais ceci, s'il vous plaît. If you don't know the name of the item you want in the menu, you can just point and say, Je voudrais ceci. I want this, please. Pourrions-nous avoir le menu, s'il vous plaît? Could we have the menu, please? Usually you have to ask for it. Sometimes the place is very crowded, so ask. Le menu, s'il vous plaît. Could we have the menu, please? Avez-vous des recommandations? Do you have any recommendations? If you are at a bar and want for some cocktail, it can be like, oh, I like something fruity. Do you have any recommendation? J'aimerais quelque chose de fruité. Avez-vous des recommandations? And then the bartender will make you some fancy cocktail. Je suis allergique aux cacahuètes. I'm allergic to peanuts. If you have any allergies, be sure to ask whenever you are going out or trying to eat something. People will be really nice about it. And sometimes it's even on the menu. If you have any allergies, there will be a sign saying, yes, yeah, this contains nut or this contains milk or this contains gluten. And you can make sure that you don't eat something you don't want to ingest. <laughs> Avez-vous des plats végétariens? Do you have any vegetarian dishes? If you are vegetarian or vegan, there will also be a sign very often on the menu saying this dish contains no meat or this is vegan safe, it's made with no animal grease or eggs or milk. Pourrais-je avoir l'addition? Could I have the check? Pourrais-je avoir l'addition s'il vous plaît? Could I have the check please? Prenez-vous la carte de crédit? 
Do you take credit card? Can I pay by credit card? Puis-je payer avec ma carte de crédit? Pourriez-vous me prendre en photo, s'il vous plaît? Could you take a picture of me, please? What, you don't have your selfie stick? Come on, that's something every traveler should have. Un, deux, trois, oui, Titi. Je voudrais un siège non fumeur, s'il vous plaît. I'd like to have a non-smoking seat, please. Well, restaurants in France have banned smoking inside for a couple of years now. So every restaurant you go to should be non-smoking. Smoking is only allowed in bars. Good luck with that. Do you have non-smoking seats? Avez-vous des sièges non fumeurs? Pourriez-vous me donner un rabais? Could you give me a discount? Un peu moins cher? A little bit cheaper? This is again if you go to flea market and especially on Sundays, you will have a bunch of sellers selling stuff from their homes. You can negotiate the price a lot over there. And getting an item half price is really common. So you can say, Ah, un peu moins cher. Ou, est-ce que je pourrais avoir un rabais? S'il vous plaît, give me a discount, please. Or make it cheaper, a tiny bit cheaper. Okay, more. More cheap, even, even cheaper, way, way cheaper. Okay, give it to me, free, now. Pourrais-je obtenir un plan? Could I get a map? Plan would be more a map of something you want inside, for example, if you're in a museum. And if you are outside and got lost and go to the information center, for example, you can ask, pourrais-je avoir une carte? Could I get a map? J'ai une réservation. I have a reservation. When you get to a restaurant and have a reservation, they will often ask you at the front desk, so do you have a reservation? Avez-vous une réservation? You can say, yes, I have a reservation. Oui, j'ai une réservation. Puis j'ai essayé. Can I try this on? Yeah, if you want to try some clothes, you can ask the staff. Puis j'ai essayé ceci. Can I try this? Parlez-vous anglais? Do you speak English? French people aren't really good at speaking English, but they will try their best. So if you find someone and cannot express yourself in French properly and ask them, Parlez-vous anglais? Do you speak English? They may say, no, not that much, but no, je, je ne parle pas beaucoup, ou je ne parle pas anglais. The most common sentence I learn in every language is, a beer, please. Une bière, s'il vous plaît. Anytime it's summer, it's hot, and you want something fresh, une bière, s'il vous plaît. A beer, please, to go with your nice meal or just to freshen up and chill with friends. So that's it for this week. What's your most used travel sentence? Leave me a comment to let me know. And if you want to learn more French, don't forget to check the website, frenchpod101.com. We'll see you next time. See ya. Travel time. In this video, you'll learn 20 of the most common words and phrases in French. Hi, everybody. My name is Leah. Welcome to the 800 core French word and phrases video series. This series will teach you the 800 most common words and phrases in French. But there is a twist. With each new lesson in the series, we'll include the previous lessons at the end. So, after you learn the new words and phrases, stick around and review what you learned in previous lessons. Reviewing is one of the most important parts of learning a language. You can also get the full list right now at frenchpod101.com. Click the link in the description to access more example sentences, create your own flashcard deck, and finally master French. Okay, let's get started. First is... Neuvième Ninth Neuvième Neuvième Ninth Le Ramadan est le neuvième mois de l'année musulmane. Ramadan is the ninth month of the Muslim year. Le Ramadan est le neuvième mois de l'année musulmane. Dixième. Tenth. Dixième. Dixième. Tenth. J'ai finalement marqué un but à ma dixième tentative. I finally made a goal on my tenth attempt. J'ai finalement marqué un but à ma dixième tentative. Huitième. Eighth. Huitième. Huitième. Eighth. 
J'ai eu un vélo pour mon huitième anniversaire. I was given a new bicycle for my eighth birthday. J'ai eu un vélo pour mon huitième anniversaire. Rasoir. Shaving razor. Rasoir. Rasoir. Shaving razor. Rasoir jetable. Disposable shaving razor. Rasoir jetable. Gants de toilette. Washcloth. Gants de toilette. Gants de toilette. Washcloth. Le garçon se lave le visage avec un gant de toilette. The boy is washing his face with a washcloth. Le garçon se lave le visage avec un gant de toilette. Serviette de bain. Towel. Serviette de bain. Serviette de bain. Towel. J'ai perdu la serviette de bain. I've lost the towel. J'ai perdu la serviette de bain. Cuillère. Spoon. Cuillère. Cuillère. Spoon. Je mange un yaourt avec une cuillère. I eat yogurt with a spoon. Je mange un yaourt avec une cuillère. Fourchette. Fork. Fourchette. Fourchette. Fork. La fourchette est en plastique. The fork is made of plastic. La fourchette est en plastique. Couteau. Knife. Couteau. Couteau. Knife. Pouvez-vous me passer le couteau? Could you pass me the knife? Pouvez-vous me passer le couteau? Assiette. Plate. Assiette. Assiette. Plate. Mon assiette est pleine. My plate is full. Mon assiette est pleine. Abeille. B. Abeille. Abeille. B. Les abeilles font du miel. Bees make honey. Les abeilles font du miel. Fourmi. Ant. Fourmi. Fourmi. Ant. Les fourmis ont six pattes. Ants have six legs. Les fourmis ont six pattes. Serpent. Snake. Serpent. Serpent. Snake. L'anguille ressemble à un serpent. An eel looks like a snake. L'anguille ressemble à un serpent. Lait. Milk. Lait. Lait. Milk. Je ne bois jamais de lait. I never drink milk. Je ne bois Jamais de lait. Designer. 
designer, 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 designer. Il y a plusieurs types de designer, mais je suis un créateur de mode. There are many kinds of designers, but I'm a fashion designer. Il y a plusieurs types de designers, mais je suis un créateur de mode. Artist, 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 artist. Beaucoup d'artistes luttent longtemps avant de réussir. Many artists struggle for a long time before achieving success. Beaucoup d'artistes luttent longtemps avant de réussir. Soldat. Soldier. Soldat. Soldat. Soldier. Dix mille soldats ont été dispersés sur le champ de bataille. Ten thousand soldiers were dispatched on the site of the battle. Dix mille soldats ont été dispersés sur le champ de bataille. Entrepreneur. 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 Les entrepreneurs changent le monde avec leurs idées. Entrepreneurs change the world with their ideas. Les entrepreneurs changent le monde avec leurs idées. Nouvelle. Short story. Nouvelle. Nouvelle. Short story. The gift of the Magi est une nouvelle émouvante pour beaucoup de personnes. The gift of the Magi is a moving short story for many. The gift of the Magi est une nouvelle émouvante pour beaucoup de personnes. Classeur. Folder. Classeur. Classeur. Folder. J'ai mis les documents dans le classeur. I put the documents in a folder. J'ai mis les documents dans le classeur. Well done! In this lesson, you expanded your vocabulary and learned 20 new useful words. Click the link in the description and sign up for free at frenchpod101.com to get access to the full list of vocabulary you need for daily life conversations. You'll also get example sentences, custom flashcard decks, and more learning resources. See you next time! Au revoir! Remember, here's what you can do to learn all of these words by heart. Drill these words with our spaced repetition flashcards, which will help cement these words into your long-term memory. Save them to the word bank, your personal vocabulary collection, where you can print out your own study sheets, or review the words with our looped vocabulary slideshow and play it until you know all of the words. So click the link in the description right now and sign up for your free lifetime account to get these lessons and study tools. Hey guys, this is Pierre from France. Today's lesson, we will target present tense. So you know in French, you've got a lot of tense and the most basic one is the présent, present. Although the name is quite explicit and quite similar to the English word and the English tense, we need to explain to you some subtleties, some nuances that uh, are happening with uh, the usage of uh, the, the present tense. So first we will target the usage, then I will show you how to form it and then we will do some exercise to be sure that you understood everything. So let's get started with the usage. So here you can see five different usages. So the first one is current actions. So like in English, when you want to explain an action that is being done, you use present. 
So here, first example, je mange du pain. Here the verb is in red, manger, mange. Je mange du pain. In English, you can translate that by, you can use, I am eating bread, or I eat bread. I am eating bread or I eat bread. Je mange du pain. So here, one way to translate that is to use the present in English as well, but also you can use the progressive one, I am eating, I am eating bread. So this is current actions. In English, you can use present or progressive present, but in French, it's generally just present. Here, you've got another example, il a faim, il a faim. He is hungry, he is hungry. Il a faim, the verb here, avoir, a, present. So basically here, you're expressing a feeling. So for a feeling, you usually just uh, use the present. So that's current actions or current feelings. So here, what you're doing, I'm eating bread, je mange du pain, you use present. Or il a, um, il a faim, I am hungry, this is my feeling, this is the current action, the action of feeling something. So this is present. So I think this is quite similar to the English one. Um, so this is um, something really simple for you to understand. Um, remember that in many different situations you translate progressive present with uh, present, simple present in French. So th is, this was the first one for current actions. Then you've got another one which is when an action has started before but is still underway. So basically here, je fais du tennis depuis 10 ans. I have been playing tennis for 10 years. So here, the tense that you use in English is not present. This is to be doing something. You use to be doing something. I have been playing tennis for 10 years. Je fais du tennis depuis 10 ans. Here, this is présent. Présent, je fais. Je fais. So like you're not doing actually tennis, like you're not currently playing tennis, but for 10 years you've been regularly uh, doing some tennis, so you use, and you're still doing it, so you use présent, present, je fais. So this is an action that started, but is still underway. So here you started before, but you're still doing it. So this is something that can be translated. Um, this is present is a way to translate to be doing something in French. Then you've got true facts. True facts. Il s'appelle Pierre. So this is my name, Pierre. Il s'appelle Pierre. My name is Pierre. Or his name is Pierre here. His name is Pierre. This is true. Il s'appelle Pierre. This is a fact that is true. So we use present here. But here is like something that is uh, like general, like um, a general truth. La Terre tourne autour du Soleil. The Earth revolves around the Sun. So this is true. And you need to use present to express that. And in English as well, you use present. So this is similar. For facts, true facts, you use present like in English. Then the next one is habits. When you, when you want to express an, an habit that you have, you need to use the present in French. For example, if you are um, vegetarians and you want to say that you only eat vegetables, you can say, je ne mange que des légumes. Je ne mange que des légumes. I only eat vegetables. Légumes, vegetables. I only eat vegetables. So here, that's an habit that you have, like you, when you eat, it's always vegetables. So here you use present. Je ne mange que des légumes. Another example is, chaque lundi, je vais au cinéma. Chaque lundi, je vais au cinéma. Every Monday, you go to cinema. You go to the theater. So here, chaque lundi, je vais au cinéma. This is a habit that you have. So you need to use present. Like you, this is an action that you do regularly, here, every Monday. Chaque lundi, je vais au cinéma. 
every Monday, I go to the theater. So this is Hanabit. And the last one is actions about to happen. If you want to say that you will arrive at 2 p.m., in English you use will arrive, but you can also say I arrived at 2 p.m. In French, this is more common to use just present. So if you want to say that you want to underpin that the action is really about to happen, like it means you will really arrive soon, you can just drop the future and use the present. J'arrive vers 14 heures. J'arrive vers 14 heures. I will arrive at 2 p.m. or literally, I arrive at 2 p.m. You can also use the future here, but when you say, that you, when you use the present, it means like it's really about to happen. So that's something that is almost done. Another example here is je regarde un dernier épisode, puis je dors. So here you've got two verbs that are in present. Je regarde un dernier épisode, puis je dors. So I watch one last episode and then I go to sleep. So here it's present, but you still haven't watched your episode yet. Je regarde un dernier épisode. I'm about to watch one more episode and then I will go to bed. But here, because you want to, uh, you about to start, but you still haven't started yet, you use present. Je regarde un dernier épisode, et puis je dors. Here again, you, when you say you use the present, it means, okay, it's, I'm soon going to go to bed. It's just one last episode. So this is uh, like really about to happen as well. So for the two verbs, you use present. So you've got five different kind of usages. Current actions, actions that have started but are still underway, true facts, habits, and actions about to happen. This is slightly different uh, from English, so be sure to understand the difference. Basically, when you use, I have been playing or I have been doing something, usually in French it's translated with present, and when you say, uh, I am doing something, I am eating, for example, in most of the case, you will translate in French uh, with um, something in present, a verb in present. I am eating, je mange. But it's not always the case, but that's like kind of a tendency. So th you've got this pattern and this pattern that are sometimes translated into English. So in most cases, you will use English present and French present in the same um, situations. But sometimes you've got some differences. As you can see here, to be doing something, here it's present. Or to have been doing something, here it, again it's present. And sometimes the will, like for the future, is dropped. So I will arrive, just j'arrive. So be careful with that and remember all those usages. Now let's move on how, on how to form that. The first thing that you need to know when you learn the difference between all the forms in French is the groups. So you know that there are four different groups. The first group, the second group, the third group, and then the auxiliaries. So I'm going to explain it once again. The first group is all the verbs with ending with ER. ER, so here you've got an example, to walk, marcher. It's a verb from the first group words ending with ER. Then you've got the second group with verbs ending with IR, IR, IR. But it's not all the verbs ending with IR. Some of them are in the third group, so be careful. But most of them are um, in the second group. And then you've got the irregular verbs that are all the other verbs and they are like really uh, tricky because you need to learn by heart how to change their form. So that's kind of a pain, but you, need to re you really need to know that because it's usually made of really common verbs like pouvoir, to be able to, or vouloir, to want. You need to learn those. So this is something that you need to be careful. First group, second group, third group. And sometimes verb ending with IR are also in the third group. 
And then you've got the two auxiliaries. The two auxiliaries in French are avoir and être, to have and to be. So here is uh, the conjugaison, the, the different um, forms for all of the verbs, all of the categories, and for the present only. So here, the, what is good with the first two categories, the first two group, is it's regular. You've got no exceptions. So here is the verb marcher, to walk. Je marche, e at the end. Tu marches, es at the end. Il, elle marche, e at the end. Nous marchons, o and s at the end. Vous marchez, e, z. And then il, elle marche, e and t. So what you need to do is just get rid of the ending, the er, and you add always the same ending. So this is really simple. Be sure to learn all these, those endings and you will be able to do the, change, the changement for the form for all the verbs of this group. And then, this is similar in the second group, except the ending is a bit different. So here, if we take this verb, finir, to finish, you've got fini, 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 with a T, finissons, finissez, finis. So here, be sure to check the S, the S, and the T, and then those differences. And if you know the verb, you know it's a second group, you just get rid of the IR and you add the correct ending depending on the subject. So that's how you do that. And then be careful, once again, if some verbs ending with IR are from irregular verbs group. So be careful, you need to know that. And I'm not going to explain all the irregularities because otherwise it would be too long. But here are the two auxiliaries and you really need to know them. So here it's for the present. Je, here because it's starting with the vowel, you get rid of the E. Then tu as, il a, nous avons, vous avez, ils ont. And then for the verb to be, suis, je suis, tu es, il est, nous sommes, vous êtes, and ils sont. Ils sont. So this is what you need to remember for uh, the present, and then learn the irregular verbs. So this is really simple, like this is the easiest tense in French, and this is the most common one, so basically we are lucky for that. Um, so just remember all those endings. And now let's do some practice, because it's always good to, after a lesson, to practice. So here are three different sentences with um, a gap here, and I want you to complete with the verbs in blue here. So here you've got tu, and then the verb pleurer, it means to cry, and then pour un rien. So can you try by yourself to complete? I'm going to show you the answer after showing you all the examples. So here, il, something, the verb guérir, to cure or to heal. Plus vite que ce que je pensais. Il, mm -hmm. plus vite que ce que je pensais. And then the last one, je, the verb to be, être, être, toujours le dernier. So if you have difficulties to understand the meaning of the sentences, I'm going to translate that into English. Tu uh, pour rien, you're crying for nothing. Then the second one is, he is healing faster than I was expecting. And then the last one, I am always the last one. So here you've got the three verbs. Try it by yourself and then I will show you the answers. Okay, so the answers are pleurer, pleurer ends with ER, so it's first group. So the subject is tu, tu, es, so you just get rid of er and you add es and you've got pleur, tu pleures pour un rien, you cry for nothing. Then guérir, guérir, 
IR. Luckily, this is a second group verb. So you just check the subject, il, il. You see here, it. So this is get ri. You get rid of the it and you add i, the i. You get rid of the i or and you add it here. And the last one, verb être, here, je, être, toujours le dernier, je, subject, here, verb, so je suis, toujours le dernier. So I'm going to repeat once again. Tu pleures pour un rien, you cry for nothing, il guérit plus vite que ce que je pensais, he is healing faster than I was expecting, je suis toujours le dernier. I'm always the last one. So this was the first exercise. The second one might be a bit more difficult. I want you to translate a sentence from French, from English to French. So here, she has been playing piano for 10 years. And the second one may be a bit more difficult. Whenever I get late, I feel bad. So the first one, she has been playing piano for 10 years. It's using a pattern that we've, we've seen before. Do you remember? Okay, so now I'm going to show you the answers. She has been playing piano for 10 years. Elle joue du piano depuis 10 ans. Elle joue du piano depuis 10 ans. So here you've got the verb that is playing, playing, joue, present. Joue is first group verb, so you just take this subject, you see it's e, so you add e at the end. And then the last one, whenever I get laid, I feel bad. The translation is, à chaque fois, que je suis en retard. So here there is a space. Je me sens mal. So here there are two verbs. Get late and feel bad. So get late is être en retard, être en retard. So like it's um, like to be late, the, the literal translation of to be late. Je suis en retard, je suis here. And then I feel bad. In French, the translation for to feel good or to feel bad, it's um, se sentir mal, se sentir mal. So here you take the transformation, the subject is I, I, and then sentir. Sentir is irregular, so you need to know how to form it. And this is this. This form is sentir. So this one was a bit more difficult, so be sure to check all the irregular verbs. That's really important for you if you want to master all the common verbs in French, because the most common verbs are irregular. That's a pity, but you really need to learn that. So let's sum it up. So here we've seen the usage. So five different usages. When, there is, when this is the current actions, um, when, the, when you started the action, but it's still underway, and also when you've got um, like true facts and habits, and then actions that are about to happen. It's still not, it ha still hasn't happened yet, but it's really s close to be, to be done. Like it's, it's about to happen. And then you need to remember all those different endings. So for the two groups, for the two main verbs, avoir and être, and then learn the irregular verbs. That's really important. Well, if you remember all that, present tense is really easy for you now. So I really hope you like it. 
That's all for today's lesson. If you like it, you can click on the like button or subscribe to our channel. You can also leave a comment in the comment section down below. And if you want some more French resources, you can go on our website frenchpod101.com. You will find a lot of different contents that will help you to master French. See you next time, guys. Bye. Au revoir. Hey guys, it's Pierre from France. Welcome back for more videos on French learning. Today's video will be about genders in French. I know it's really annoying genders in that language, but it's something that you really need to master if you want to sound French and to speak uh, real French. But um, we think that usually it's really random the way that a noun is feminine or masculine. But in fact, there are some rules that you can remember and if you do that, you will be able to guess if a noun is feminine or masculine. But of course, experience is better than just learning rules. So just you need to, when you learn a new word, try to remember uh, the gender. So let's get started with feminine ending. The, if, you, if you see one word ending with this one, yon, you are like 99% sure that it's a feminine word. And if it's with sion or sion, like same pronunciation but different letter, here it's with a T and here it's with an S, this you're sure with 100%. So here you've got this example, la construction, la construction. So I will always put uh, an article here to show that it's feminine or masculine. So here it's feminine, la, you know, the equivalent, the masculine equivalent is le, but here it's la. La construction, like in English, construction. And here, like uh, traduction or translation, traduction, la traduction, T-I-O-N. It means it's a feminine word. So just remember that. And some examples with uh, sion, la télévision, Television, again, it's uh, a similar word in English. And here, la décision, la décision, decision. So as you can see, for those words, usually it's the same than in English, like almost the same here. There's the accent in French and here as well, but it's the same ending. So if you, I can't, if you see those two endings, it's feminine and usually it's the, the English equivalent of the word is kind of similar because these endings exist in, in English as well. So this is for uh, Sion and Sion. So same pronunciation even for French speakers. Um, here is another one, T. Like for example, la beauté, la beauté, beauty, and la réalité, la réalité. So as you can see in English, Beauty, beauté, réalité, reality. T is the equivalent of T in English. So, like, when you see a word that is um, ending with a T, T-Y in English, there is a high probability that uh, the translation would be with T, and if it's the case, the word is always feminine. Uh, some other examples like clarity, clar clarté, la clarté, clarity, la clarté. So here it's a bit different, but you see T and T en français, in French. So here, those two endings are really important, but the next category is most of the words ending with E. E, you know, it's the feminine mark. Like when you have an adjective, you have to, you have to change the, the ending of the adjective depending on the noun, if it's a masculine noun or a feminine noun. And usually, and it's like always the case in fact, you add an E to prove that it's a feminine, uh, to, to, you add an E at the end of the adjective because the noun is feminine. So E is the mark of the, um, of the feminine form. But uh, not all the words, all the nouns ending with E are feminine, but 
a lot, many, many of them. And for those endings, it's always the case. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. You have six different endings. The first one is et. Et, like when you say a word with et for French uh, native speaker, it sounds feminine. Et is really feminine, with double T-E. For example, cigarette, la cigarette, cigarette, la cigarette. Same than in English, here, feminine. Then here you have trumpet, la trompette, la trompette, la trompette. Again, feminine. You have E double T E, E double T E, feminine, always. Here, you've got two similar ones, en, ans, and ans. Like, same pronunciation, but sometimes it's with an A, sometimes it's with an E. So here, you have la ressemblance, ressemblance. Similar to the English word, resemblance, except that in French you need to add two S here. You have two S. In English you have only one. La ressemblance, la ressemblance. It ends with A-N-C-E, so definitely it's a feminine word. Same with this one. La chance, like chance or luck. C-H-A-N-C-E, A-N-C-E. Feminine, always feminine. The next one is with E-N-C-E, so same pronunciation. As you can see here, la différence, similar to the English word, difference. La différence, here there is an accent, but in English it's the same except that. La différence, difference. So here you can see when I say ressemblance and différence, this is the same pronunciation there is, even for native French speakers, there is no difference in between those two sounds. So don't be afraid. Uh, don't, this is quite no more for native uh, French speakers not to distinguish that. The only way you can distinguish it is when you write it. And here is another example, l'intelligence. L'intelligence, like smartness or the fact of being clever, cleverness. L'intelligence. So here again, E-N-C-E. -E. But for this one, there is one big exception. This is silence. Silence, like quietness. Le silence. Here, even though it's E-N-C-E, -E, you need to be, to, to use um, like le, which is, mask which proves that it's masculine. So le silence, masculine word. Be careful with this one. Then there is another one which is U-R-E. U-R-E. Here is an example. La peinture, like painting. La peinture. La peinture. So here, U-R-E, so again, feminine. Another one is la culture. La culture. Culture. Here, it's... U or E, so definitely it's feminine. So this is for this one. No, let's move on to the next one. E double S E. As this one, E double T E, when you hear that as a native French speaker, it sounds really feminine. So almost all the words with E double S E are feminine. Same for this one. There is like no big exception for this one. La sagesse, like wisdom, la sagesse, sagesse, it means that it's feminine, because E double S E. In French, the E double S E uh, ending is quite similar to the ness one in English, like cleverness. Um, it's a way to make an adjective, to turn an adjective into a noun. So here, you can say sage. Someone is sage, like wise. And if you add E double S E, it becomes a noun. So here, la sagesse. Here is an ex another example, la promesse. In English, promise. La promesse. Here again, E double S E. So definitely it's feminine. And the last one is I N E. 
like in la cuisine, kitchen, or cuisine, you can also say cuisine. Because in French, cuisine means like the fact of cooking and uh, the activity of cooking and also the room, the kitchen. So here, cuisine, I-N-E. And here, l'origine, the origin. So here, as you can see, and you can see that as well in intelligence, l'intelligence, there is a vowel. So with this, you cannot say if it's feminine or masculine, if you just see the L like that, because there is a contraction. But this, um, if you use like un or une, you would say une origine, or here une intelligence, you have to be careful because here, uh, when you say it, you need to know if it's masculine or feminine. But here, you know it's feminine because it's I-N-E, or here it's E-N-C-E. So be careful with that. So it was like six examples, like the six biggest categories of nouns that are always feminine and nouns that end with an E. Because as you can see, it's always ending with an E, with an E. So here, always feminine, except in this case, and maybe they, they are some more, like, there are some more, but don't focus too much on that, because in 99% of the, of the cases, it's always feminine. So this is uh, the good ones, and sometimes there, is also, there are also some masculine E ending, but we will see that later. But if you don't know if a word is feminine or masculine, but the word ends with a he, with a e, there is a high chance that this one is feminine. And if it's this one, it's definitely feminine. Let's move on to masculine endings. The first one is en. When you see a word that ends with en, the sound en, I know it's a difficult one for non-native non -native French speakers, but this one is really important. En, 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 en. Same pronunciation for the four words. So here, as you can see, there is an E and an A, but it's the same. And here you've got a silent T. You don't say it. So for those four endings, it's en. It's a bit similar to this en, en. Like, same pronunciation, even if it's an A or an E. So here, en, en. There is a high chance that if it ends with an en, it's masculine. And if it's with M, E, N, T, you sure, like 99%, almost, like, almost 100% that it's masculine. So here is an example, le paiement, payment. Like it's the same that in English, meant. If a word, usually a word uh, in English that ends with meant, you can translate it into a word in French that ends with ment. And if you do it, it's always masculine. Masculine. Le paiement. The payment. Le paiement. So here you're sure like 100% for this one. But um, for the other ones, you're almost sure, like I would say more than 90%. So here, you've got some examples. A child, un enfant, un enfant. So here I do the liaison, un enfant. Or you can also say l'enfant. But here you don't, it's same than here. Like you don't see if it's masculine or feminine. So for these examples, those examples, I prefer to use un or une. So here you've got un. So, un enfant, A-N-T, it's masculine, A-N-T. Next one is a glove, un gant, un gant, un gant, A-N-T, glove, enfant, gant. Here, same, to, same ending, so not much to say. So here is another one, un paysan, un chien, paysan, A-N, un chien, I -N. Here you can see en paysan chien. But here the pronunciation is a bit different for chien. 
but um, here you've got a masculine word. But one thing you can do in French is sometimes for like words, especially for animals and um, people, because here un paysan it means like peasant and chien means dog. So here it's an animal and here it's a person, like a peasan. For in those cases, in French, you can turn those words into a feminine one. If you add usually a specific mark, and usually this specific mark is the feminine E. E is the mark of feminine noun. So here, if you add an E, you can do it. But with the AN and EN, when you do that, you need to double the N. So, une paysanne, une Chien. So here you double the N and you add an E. So here you've got the feminine ending and a masculine ending. So that's why in most cases N A and E N are masculine, because if you want the feminine equivalent, you need to add N E at the end. So this one, en, usually it's always. Um, masculine. Let's move on to the next one. Here it's un, the sound un. So here it's three different ways to, to write un, but it's the same un. Here it's silent t, and here it's the same un. I know it's quite hard. Maybe you don't hear the difference between en and un, but like it's really different for French speakers. Le pain, bread. Le pain. Le pain. It's a bit similar to chien here. Le pain, chien. Like E, E, N is a bit similar to A, A, I, N. So, yeah, you've got this one. And here you've got another example. Le chemin. Le chemin. Path. Here, I, N. And here another one, a funny one. Le pingouin, which is not like penguin, but oak. It's almost the same. But here you've got one uh, other words with I-N. But here you've got like a not common ending in French, O-U-I-N. But it's still I-N, so masculine. So here, masculine, 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 I-N, I-N, I-N. So here it's even A-I-N. So here, as you can see, it's masculine I-N, and here with an E, it's feminine, so it's, it's not the equivalent, like it's not, like you cannot just add an E and make it, and turn it into a feminine word, but you can notice that with an E, it's feminine, and without, it's masculine. So yeah, it's really important to remember that usually I-N, the, the sound un, is masculine. So you've got those two examples. Let's move on to the next one. Here, you've got different ways to say the sound O. O. This is almost 99%, almost 100% sure that the words that ends with one of these will be masculine. So here it's the same pronunciation. O, 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 O. Like you've got many, many different ways to write it in French. But here it's a silent T, silent S, silent T, silent D. And here, AU, it's O in French, and E, AU, it's, all, it's also O. So here, le crapaud, like a toad. Toad in English, le crapaud, crapaud. Here, AUD, so this one, it's masculine. Here is another one, snail, un escargot, un escargot. Escargot, so here, OT, same pronunciation, O. Un escargot. Another one is le saut, like a jump, the jump. A-U-T, you don't say the T, so it's masculine, le saut. Un oiseau, like a bird. Here, E-A-U, E-A-U, so it's masculine. But there is one big exception, which is in fact not really an exception. This is l'eau. So here you cannot see if it's masculine or feminine, so you would say une O. Here you can see that it's E-A-U, but in fact, 
the whole word is E-A-U. It's not an ending, because here it's like, um, grammatically speaking, um, this is uh, an ending, but here the whole word is E-A-U, so it's not an ending. So be careful with this one. But we don't say a lot, un o. But it's important to know that E-A-U is uh, feminine when you use an adjective, like um, une eau claire, like clear water. Here, it's important for the E. So be, but here I used une, but if you want to use l'eau, l'eau claire here, you need to know for the E here. So let's move on to the next one, which is on, the son, the sound on. With on, un, on is probably one of the most difficult sounds for French learners. So here, like it's silent T, and silent D, and here like OM and ON, it's the same pronunciation in French. So here, le ballon, le ballon, like the ball, le ballon, masculine. Le dragon, dragon, same than in English, same. Le pont, like a bridge, bridge, O-N-T, T is silent, le pont. Here you've got le prénom, like first name, but it's the case for like nickname, le surnom, or um, le nom, name. You've got O-M here. M is like if it was an N, so here, masculine. And another one, an example with O-N-D is le bon, like leap, it's a leap. So here, silent D, masculine. The next one is OU, again, X silent, T silent, so it's the same pronunciation for all those endings. This one, it's not 100% sure but it's almost like those ones are um, really common this one maybe a bit less uh, same than this one same for this one but it's in almost in a lot of cases it's um, masculine so here you've got uh, an example le pou like laus in the head on the head le pou o u x o u x like pronunciation ou so it's not, uh, it's masculine. Le ragout, like stew, the stew, O-U-T, O-U-T. Here, le caillou, people, people, le caillou. Always pronunciation OU, so masculine for all those cases. And be careful with this one, la roue. La roue, it's um, like a feminine word. But here it's not one of the three, um, one of the three endings that is written. Here it's with an E, O-U-E. So that's why it's not 100%. It's because uh, like all the way you can write OU in French, uh, only three of them are like almost always masculine. There is one ending that is feminine. It's when it's with an E. So again, as I told you, most of the words ending with E or feminine. And this is an example. The next one is al, like le cheval, horse, or animal, animal, un animal, l'animal, un animal, or hospital, un hôpital. Same, you see that a lot of words in English ends with al, and usually it's often the case that in French it's also with al, so in those cases, it's masculine. So, al, masculine. In many cases. It's not always the case, but in most cases. So, this is all for um, the masculine endings, like the common ones. But there is also masculine endings, which are E sometimes. I told you most of the words ending with E are feminine, but it's not always the case. So, here you've got like it's 100% sure that it's feminine, except for this one, le silence. But it's like almost always feminine. But there are some words that are always masculine. 
And then for the remaining ones, there is a high chance that it's feminine, but sometimes it's also masculine. So be careful. But usually, if you just remember those four endings, without remembering those ones, you can guess that the word is feminine. If it's not one of these, it's probably feminine. But if you want really to like to be accurate, you should also learn those ones. That sounds feminine. And it's always feminine when you hear that. So here are the four ones that are always masculine. This one is really common. Ism. Like, it's like in English, ism. Like, le réalisme. Le réalisme. Realism. Like, humanism. L'humanisme. Like, feminism. Le féminisme. Here, always, le. Le féminisme. Le réalisme. Realism. So, I-S-M-E, always masculine. Here is another one, like âge. Like you can say l'âge, for example, the age, but it's not a terminism here. Uh, like it's same than O, because the full word is âge. Here, mar in mariage, like uh, wedding or also marriage, because in French it's the same word. You've got uh, the A-G-E as, as, as an ending. So here, it's masculine. All the word with A-G-E or masculine in French. And here are two other ones, like scope in English. So scope in French, scope. Like telescope, telescope in English. Le telescope, like really similar. Le telescope, le téléphone in French. Le téléphone in English, like telephone. So here you can see like it's the same beginning of the word, like télé. And here you've got different ending, and those two endings are um, masculine. So all words with scope and like scope in French, scope in English, or phone, phone in English, and fun in French, fun, scope, fun. Like it's not really a O, it's like fun, a bit different. Maybe you cannot catch it, but it doesn't really matter. Le téléphone, le télescope. So, that's all for the, um, for the masculine E endings. Like it's, in those cases, it's always masculine. So be careful with that. So let's sum that up. Feminine endings and masculine endings. For feminine endings, there is I-O-N and T-E. It's like almost feminine, in all cases feminine, like almost 100% sure that it's, it will be feminine. So those two only. I will talk about that later. For masculine endings, you've got this one, en, o. Those two are like almost 100%, like 99%. For M, E, N, T, it's 100%. So for those two, it's almost always masculine. For those two as well, un and on, it's almost always masculine. Here, when you hear ou, it's always masculine, except if there is O-U-E, which, which means like it's, um, it's uh, feminine. By the way, I didn't translate this word. Roux is like the wheel. So in this case, and also a last one, al, often masculine when you see A-L. And concerning the E endings, if you don't know, there is a high chance that it's feminine. If it's one of those, this is masculine. But in other cases, it's almost always feminine, as you can see here. But sometimes it's not the case. But for those ones, it's 100% sure that it's the case. So I hope with those endings, if you can remember that, like you don't need to learn that by heart, but if you can do it, like remember some of them, you will be able to guess the gender and this is really helpful when you learn French. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, you can click on the like button and you can leave a comment in, uh, on the section down below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, you can subscribe to our channel. We have a lot of contents. And if you want to learn more French, you can visit our website frenchpod101.com. We have a lot of resources and you can improve your French. 
So I hope you really enjoyed that and see you next time. It was Pierre. Bye. Hi everybody, Candice here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I answer your most common French questions. The question for this lesson is, how do you know when to use le passé composé or l'imparfait? There are two commonly used past tenses in French. Le passé composé, the past perfect, and l'imparfait, the imperfect. Le passé composé is made up of an auxiliary verb, either être, meaning to be, or avoir, to have, plus the main verb in the participe passé or past participle form. L'imparfait just used the main verb in the imperfect form. Let's do some examples so you can learn how to use le passé composé and l'imparfait correctly. When telling a story in the past, le passé composé is used for the sequence of events. These are specific events that happened at a certain time, like j'ai mangé une pomme, meaning I ate an apple. L'imparfait is used for describing context or circumstances that happened within that time frame. For example, je mangeais une pomme, I was eating an apple. You'll often use l'imparfait and le passé composé together in the same sentence. L'imparfait illustrates the context and le passé composé is the disruption of an action. For example, this sentence uses both. Je mangeais une pomme quand Loïc a appelé, meaning I was eating an apple when Loïc called. Je mangeais une pomme sets the scene. I was eating an apple. Quand means when, that's the interruption. The interruption is a time-specific event. So we use le passé composé. Loïc a appelé, meaning Loïc called. That's it for this lesson. I hope I helped clear things up. If you have any more questions, please leave them in the comments below and I try to answer them. À bientôt. See you soon. Welcome back, watchers. And this week, we're going to be talking about the top 15 words chosen by fans. So you choose words and let's talk about them. What did you choose? <laughs> let's see. Super. Awesome. Awesome. You guys are awesome. Vous êtes super. So awesome. Trop super. It's awesome. C'est super. I'm awesome. Je suis super. What's awesome to you? Leave a comment. <laughs> à bientôt. See you soon. Yeah, it already ended. See you soon. No, it's not. Okay, whatever. So à bientôt is just see you soon and you can say it when leaving your friends. Ah, à bientôt. Anytime you would use see you soon in English. Same way. Aimer. Love. <coughs> Little heart with tiny horns. I should do it like that. <laughs> I love you. Je t'aime. Do you know I'm shy? To love someone. Aimer quelqu'un. Do you love someone? I do. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna hide in here. I love platypuses. J'aime les ornithorynques. They are so random, right? You like random animals. <laughs> I love them too. Le pain. Bread. French people love their bread. J'aime le pain. I like bread. To cut slices of bread and put ham and cheese on top. Couper des tranches de pain et mettre du jambon et du fromage dessus. Ham and cheese bread slices, yummies, with butter in between. Bien sûr, mon petit chou. Of course, my little sweetheart. This is making me shy again. My cheeks are all red. It's not because I'm sunburned or anything. Petit chou is actually my little cauliflower. <laughs> Isn't it so cute and smelly? If the wife asks the husband, Oh, can you buy me a new car? And the husband be like, Of course, my little sweetheart. Bien sûr, mon petit chou. Bonjour, hello, or hi, you say it usually in the morning, or any time of the day is actually fine. Bonjour, comment ça va? Hello, how are you? Ça va, it's okay. You can say, bonjour, comment ça va? Hello, how are you doing? Ah, ça va, or ça va bien. 
Ah, oh, I'm okay, or it's okay, or I'm fine. Sourire, smile. I like your smile. J'aime ton sourire. Some guy once said to me, your smile looks so sincere. Ton sourire a l'air tellement authentique. Ah, cheesy. So cheesy. Where is the smile? Show me that smile. Où oui, il est le sourire? Montre-moi ton sourire. We say that to little kids when taking a picture. <laughs> Français, French. You guys use French as one of your favorite words. Of course it is, or else you wouldn't be learning it. Je suis française. I'm French. Ou parler français. To speak French. Le français, c'est chouette. French is nice. Hmm. Intéressant. Interesting. This sounds really interesting. Ça a l'air très intéressant. Like me. <laughs> French is interesting. Le français est intéressant. Or else you wouldn't be learning it, right? Whatever. Maintenant. Now. I wanna rock right now. I wanna, I wanna rock right now. Je veux du rock maintenant. Je veux, je veux du rock maintenant. I want it now. Je le veux maintenant. Let's do it now. Faisons-le maintenant. Désolé. Sorry. Ah, I'm sorry. Ah, je suis désolé. Like you made a mistake and be like, ah, désolé. For example, when you bump into someone in the street or in the train, you can say, ah, pardon, instead of désolé. Désolé is more serious, like if you make a mistake, and désolé is more sense of regret. Je suis désolé. I'm sorry. Merci. Thanks. Uh, merci. Thanks is more casual than merci beaucoup. So, oh, can you give me the salt? Oh, here. Oh, thanks. Ah, oh, merci. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. When someone was very kind to you, you can add uh, beaucoup at the end of merci, which is merci beaucoup, which is deeper level of thankfulness than just merci. So merci beaucoup is kind of respectful and thanks a lot. Really a lot. Merci beaucoup de continuer à regarder mes vidéos. Thank you very much for still watching the videos. <laughs> Soufflez. You guys like food, huh? I like food too. So souffler is a souffler with English accent. And the souffler is all puffy. The souffler is too gonflé. Looks so yummy, you want to put your face in. And then it gets all flat and it's depressing and everyone cries again. We don't want it flat, we want it puffy. <laughs> and at the end, so those are the words you guys chose. And yeah, that was interesting to see what were your favorite words. If you have any other favorite words, you can always leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe and check the website if you want to know more about everything. And see you soon. A bientôt. Am I looking good again? <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Hey everyone, this is Pierre from FrenchPond101.com. Today you will learn how to pronunciate the letter R in French like a native speaker. This is quite an annoying letter R in French. R, R. After this lesson, you will be able to pronunciate R like a perfect person. And you will not face this embarrassing situation where you try to say a word in, in French with R but you are not understand. You're not understood because you mispronounced the or. So with this, you will be able to understand how to say or. French or is really different from the English or. And this is a sound r, r, that doesn't exist in English. So this is a new consonant that you need to learn when you start learning English. This is a bit like in the word eradicate. In English, eradicate, er, ech. Er, Eradicate, ech. So this is the same idea except that the or is more from the, is from the throat. So this is the big difference. We need to use our throat to, use, to make this sound happen. So here are some tips for you to pronunciate that word, that letter. So this is vibrations coming from your throat and chest. Or is not something from like just your throat, like in English, R, something like from your throat. It's more something like vibrating. You need to make your throat vibrate. Uh, this is something like that. Like when you do some gargling, like you put water in your mouth and you do. This is the sound that you need to use. 
like try to make this sound this is a good training for you you can even try with water if you want but um you can do it without so try try to understand that you, you throat is vibrating when you do this sound and in French, when you do angriness, like uh, an angry dog or when someone in a comic is uh, angry, we sh usually we use these letters. I guess we can also use that in English. And the pronunciation is like So we need to make this sound again, the vibration of the throat. Like This is the sound that a dog would make if he need to show his angriness. So this is G. And as you can see here, the sound G, the letter, the letter G is quite interesting to make this sound happen. Like this is the kind of the continuation of the sound G. So if you try to say G, 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 you start to feel that your mouth, your throat is vibrating. G, G, G. If you try to, to exaggerate, to force this sound, G, 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 you can make this sound happen, like the R. This is like a kind of continuation of, of G. So you can, if you try to do that, you can have this sound happen in your mouth. Um, so here are four tips. Like, remember, vibrations. This, you need to make your throat vibrate. Then, this is a bit like goggling, or when you're angry, or the kind of continuation of the sound of the letter G, 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 G. So try to, to say that, to say uh, G, or doing all those exercises in front of your computer. This is a good training. And here are some words, and you can try with these words. So I'm gonna just pick one first. Rate, 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 rate. It's like to fail. Rate, r, rate. Rate. You can try to pronounce that. Rate. Rate. To fail. Je rate. I fail. Rate. Rate. So try. It's okay if you exaggerate. This is the first way to, to get used to the sound. Like it's always exaggeration at first, and then you throw it, and you you will be uh, used to making this sound. So this is good. And here. Let's take another example, the example of big. In French, it's grand, grand. So here you can see GR. That's why I'm taking this sound, because this is a bit like the continuation of the sound produced by the letter G. So here it's like a kind of gr. So grand, grand. So try to say it grand, grand. So sometimes people, when they are snoring, the sound that they make is so this is like the letter R. So if you snore, maybe you are able to do this sound. Gr, gr. So here, let's have a look of all the consonants that are uh, mixed with R and the sound that is produced. So here, like this is the eight letters that can be combined with R to make a kind of sound. So we will train uh, for all these eight, those eight sounds. So first, so it's alphabetic or, or order. So here, Bra, bra. This is arm. Bra, bra, bra. You need to feel the vibration here. Bra, bra, bra. So try to say it. Bra. Did you do it? You should do it. Crier, crier maintenant. Now crier to shout when I'm shouting. Crier, 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 crier. Okay, next, next one is DR, droite, it means like right, droit, 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 right. The next one is France, like you're learning French, so you need to say uh, French, France, in English, in French, FR, France, France. France, France, this is the sound that you need to remember.
Then G, we've seen that before. Gr, gr, grand, grand. The next one, ready, when you're ready, prêt, you say prêt in French, prêt, prêt, P or prêt, 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 vibrations. And then true, like vrai, vrai in French, vrai, vrai, vr, vr. This is also the sound that we use in comics to, for uh, the noise made by car. Like a car that is, um, it is, a car is usually making this sound in French. I guess it's the same in English. Vr, 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 vrai, vrai, true, vrai, vrai. And the last one is tr. T or très, like very, it's very good. Like if you're gonna say it's very big, very big, you would say très grand, très grand, très grand, très. And sometimes, like it's hard to differentiate dr and tr, dr, tr, dr, dr, tr, droite, très, très. Droite, très droite. So try by yourself to say all those sounds. If you can manage like one by one to train that and you, if you do the sound by yourself, it's a super training for you, like you will be used to say all the common sounds with R. So this is a good training. So remember that and try to pronunciate those words. You can also find some other words that you've learned before with R and try to say it. The idea is to say it, you need to say it. You cannot just like watch a video of me saying that you need to do it yourself. Otherwise you will never remember your throat, your mouth will never remember the sounds. So you need to do that. Here are some maybe easier sounds with vowels, vowels. So here we've seen that before, or a, ra, raté, to fail, raté, raté, ra. So you can try to say it, raté, raté. The next one is to redo, refaire, re, re, or e, re, re. So I know e is sometimes hard to say, but you have to say re, re, re. The next one is re, rester, to stay. So here you can see it's or e, but the pronunciation is like if there were an accent here. So it's ré, ré, ré. So you have to say rester, ré, ré, ré. The next one is rice, ri, ri, or i, ri. So here, be careful, the z is silent, and here as well, the or is silent. This is only this or that is not silent, and here, so ri, 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 ri. An easy sound. And then rocher, like a rock. Rocher, rocher, rocher. And then rue, rue, like street. Rue, rue. So we've seen all the basic letters, all the, the basic vowels in French. But you know, in French, we've got some additional vowel sounds. Um, this is roi, roux, rang. And there are some others, but we will focus on those for now. Roi, roi. This is quite easy. If you have difficulties to say OI in French, you've got this technique. It's like RO plus A. So it's like when you say RO A. So A in French, you know it's A, A. Like you don't say A, it's A. So if you want to read that, it's A. And this is RO, RO, A. RO, A, RO, A. So this is a way to say it, but like it's a bit different that from the way I'm saying it, roi, roi, because I'm using it uh, like I'm saying it more fluently, like roi, like it's smoother, roi, 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 like it's, it means king, roi. Next one is rou, like will, rou, 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 okay? And last one is rang. Like it's the case for EN or AN, you know, EN and AN, it's exactly the same sound in French. Rentrer, rentrer, rentrer. So here you can see that we've got two R and even one more with, uh, but this one is silent because it's a verb. I will explain that letter, silent R. So here, rentrer, rentrer, 
rentrer. If you can say this word, you're, it's really good because here you've got or, so this, this annoying or, but also this sound, en, which is quite hard to say, and also like a combination between one consonant, so t, with or. So if you can try this word, like this is kind of the word that if you can say it, you quite, like it means you can master, you mastered the, you've mastered the or, the ech, ech, rentrer. So this is like some common vowels. We've got other sounds, but this is like kind of common. And if you know how to say one, you're supposed to know how to say the others if you know like another sound. So the last one, I would like you to show you three more examples. So you see here, you know how to say that in French? It's ech, ech, ech. And this is like the letter, because in French we don't say that or, it's ech, ech. So this is the sound ech. And we've got words that are using this sound. So here, like when you want to say proud in French, you say fier, fier. Fier. So the sound is like ech. Fi, ech. Fi, ech. And then two others, really common words. Father and mother. Père, mère. Père, mère. Père, mère. Again, vibrations. So here it's like the letter, the same pronunciation than when you just spell the letter. Ech, pech. Ech, pech. The letter or, ech. Father, pech. You can, can you do it? Can you try to make it? Mech, pech. And you can try with other vowels if you want. Like here it's P, but you can also try with T. Tech, tech. It means like to shut your mouth, like to be quiet. Tech, uh, tech. So this is quite interesting if you can master those examples as well. Like you should train with that. And here you've got one extra rule, like, at, like this is concerning the silent or, because or is sometimes silent when it's at the end of words, only when it's at the end of words. And in two specific cases, the first one is when there is a verb from the premier group, first group, if you know what it is in French, first group, they're all ending with er, and those verbs ending with er, the R is always silent. So here, rester, to stay, rester, R is silent, the last R. And here again, rentrer, here, the R is silent. So this is the case, the first case, and the second case is premier, premier. This is, it means, it's an adjective, and it means um, first. And this adjective is always silent here. And here you can see that you've got another R, so you can also train this word, premier. Premier, it's like P, P, R, so premier. But you have to be careful because this silent R is cons like a, there is the liaison that is used with this letter because when, when a letter is silent, there is always this liaison, this rule of the liaison. It means that when there is a, vo a word starting with a vowel after a word ending with a silent R, you've got to say the R. So here, when you want to say the first child, le premier enfant, le premier enfant, you need to do that, le premier enfant, le premier enfant. You know, this is the same, thing, the same sound than here, rang, le premier enfant. It's like you get rid, like you get rid of this letter and you add an R here. Like you say the word premier, like if the R, the R was silent, le premier, and then you add an additional or sound here before the word. So it's like instead of saying enfant, you say renfant, renfant, here. Le premier renfant. And here, this is a case where there is no vowel. Le premier fils, le premier fils. So here you don't say it. So be careful, it's only when there is a vowel. Okay, so let's wrap it up. We've seen that or is some, a sound coming from your throat. This is vibrations, really important. You need to feel those vibrations. And with this, you can, like, if you want to try to mimicate the sound, you can think of 
uh, gargling, like when you're gargling, this is the sound that you need to do. And also, like this is a sound of angriness, and as you can see here, the continuation of the sound, the beginning of the vibration is, set, is made when you do G, and then And here we've seen a lot of examples, like consonants with R, so Okay. Can you try to do it? It's a good exercise if you can do it. And then we've seen some vowels. Ra, re, re, ri, ro, ru. But also some extra ones. Roi, rou, ran. Roi, rou, ran. And also, er. Some words using uh, the letter or as if you were spelling it. Er, er, per, mer, fier. And don't forget that sometimes R is silent in two specific cases. Remember those cases, ending of verbs, uh, verbs with um, e or at the end, and premier. And with the premier in particular, there is sometimes this liaison when there is a vowel after the adjective. So with this, you can master or. You can watch this video again if you're not sure. But also, if you want to hear my accent, this is a good training. But also, you can train. Uh, by yourself and say those words. This is really important. So that's all for this lesson. Do you have any questions? If you have questions, you can still ask on the comment section. This is really interesting for you to get answers. Be sure to check the ultimate guide of French pronunciation on frenchpod101.com. You can find the link on the descriptions. And that's all for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time. Welcome to Introduction to French. My name is Alicia, and I'm joined by... Hi everyone, I'm Candice. In this lesson, you'll learn the basics of French pronunciation. In the previous lesson, you learned that roughly 30% of all English words share their origins with French words. Because of this, French pronunciation is quite similar to English. In fact, there are more common sounds than there are different ones. For example, bou sandwich, d'un, gain. Chances are you can imitate these words without much difficulty because these words use common sounds that exist in English. Of course, there are a few differences between French and English sounds too. Agneau, roux, huit, cent. These unfamiliar sounds are the ones that you need to focus on and practice. Let's take a look at some of those sounds. A big aspect of French pronunciation relates to nasalization. Nasalization simply means to pronounce something through the nose. For example, the M and N sounds are considered nasal consonants because the air escapes your nose when you pronounce these sounds. Mm. Mm. In French, some vowels can be pronounced through the mouth or through the nose. Compare oral vowels with nasal vowels in French. Une, un, son, son, certaine, certain. Nasal vowels are used often in French, so it's important that you learn them in the near future. Another unique French sound is the guttural R sound. R, roux, resté, ri. This R sound is pronounced at the back of the mouth. It sounds almost as if you're gargling. <sighs> Lastly, let's take a look at the French U sound. U, chute, rue, tu. To pronounce this sound, try saying E as in C, and then from there, slowly run your lips. U. French is renowned for being a language full of silent letters, particularly at the end of words. Consider the following. Je vais manger au restaurant. The S in the word vais, the R in the word manger, and the T at the end of restaurant are all silent letters. We don't actually pronounce them in French. Listen to it again. 
Je vais manger au restaurant. In fact, most of the time, the last letter of a French word is actually silent. Coup, froid, vous. There are, of course, exceptions to this rule. Let's look at the most common case when the next word starts with a vowel. Ordinarily, the final letter of a French word is silent. Vous. The final S in this word is silent, but when the next word begins with a vowel, vous avez. The S is no longer silent and is instead pronounced like a Z sound. Vous avez. The two words are connected by the Z sound and pronounced as if they were a single word. This linking of words through the activation of the silent letter is a common phenomenon in French known as liaison. It's the special quality which makes French sound the way that it does. Let's look at a few more examples of liaison in action. Tout, tout homme, un, un ami, neuf, neuf ans, gentil, gentil enfant. Liaisons may seem a little difficult to learn at first, but they will only get easier and more intuitive by the time you get used to pronouncing whole sentences in French. Okay, let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. In this lesson, you learned that there are more familiar sounds than unfamiliar sounds in French. We showed you some unfamiliar sounds like nasal vowels, the guttural R, and the French U. You also learned that the final letter in a French word is usually silent, and that the letter becomes active if the next word starts with a vowel. This process is known as liaison. We've covered only the basics of French pronunciation. If you're interested in learning more, check out the entire course we created, named The Ultimate Guide to French Pronunciation. In that course, we cover and break down every single sound in the French language, showing you mouth and tongue positioning and giving you tips to help you perfect your French pronunciation. In the next lesson, we'll introduce you to the basics of French grammar, where you'll learn about French word order and how to build basic phrases in French. See you in the next lesson. Bye. Bye. In this video, you'll learn 20 of the most common words and phrases in French. Hi, everybody. My name is Leah. Welcome to the 800 core French words and phrases video series. This series will teach you the 800 most common words and phrases in French. But there is a twist. With each new lesson in this series, we'll include the previous lessons at the end. So after you learn the new words and phrases, stick around and review what you learned in previous lessons. Reviewing is one of the most important parts of learning a language. You can also get the full list right now at frenchpod101.com. Click the link in the description to access more example sentences, create your own flashcard deck, and finally master French. Okay, let's get started. First is aujourd'hui, today, aujourd'hui, aujourd'hui, today. Aujourd'hui, il fait beau. Today is sunny. Aujourd'hui, il fait beau. Hier, yesterday. Hier, hier, yesterday. Venir hier, come yesterday. Venir hier. Demain, tomorrow. Demain, demain. Tomorrow. À demain. See you tomorrow. À demain. Semaine. Week. Semaine. Semaine. Week. Il y a sept jours dans une semaine. There are seven days in a week. Il y a sept jours dans une semaine. Année. Year. Année. Année. 
year. Année prochaine. Next year. Année prochaine. Année prochaine. Seconde. Second. Seconde. Seconde. Second. Juste une seconde. Just a second. Juste une seconde. Minute. 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 Il y a soixante secondes dans une minute. There are sixty seconds in a minute. Il y a soixante secondes dans une minute. Heure. Hour. Heure. Heure. Hour. Je dors huit heures par jour. I sleep for eight hours every day. Je dors huit heures par jour. Pendule. Clock. Pendule. Pendule. Clock. La pendule affiche midi moins huit. The clock reads eight minutes to twelve. La pendule affiche midi moins huit. Heure. O'clock. Heure. Heure. O'clock. Rendez-vous à la gare à neuf heures. Let's meet at the station at nine o'clock. Rendez-vous à la gare à 9 heures. Calendrier. Calendar. Calendrier. Calendrier. Calendar. J'ai noté notre anniversaire dans le calendrier. I marked our anniversary on the calendar. J'ai noté notre anniversaire dans le calendrier. Lundi. Monday. Lundi. Lundi. Monday. La semaine de travail commence lundi. The work week starts on Monday. La semaine de travail commence lundi. Mardi. Tuesday. Mardi. Mardi. Tuesday. Mardi 1er janvier. Tuesday, January 1st. Mardi 1er janvier. Mercredi. Wednesday. Mercredi. Mercredi. Wednesday. Le mercredi 18. Wednesday the 18th. Le mercredi 18. Jeudi. Thursday. Jeudi. Jeudi. Thursday. Jeudi 3 janvier. Thursday, January 3rd. Jeudi 3 janvier. Vendredi. Friday. Vendredi. 
Vendredi. Friday. La semaine de travail se termine le vendredi. The work week ends on Friday. La semaine de travail se termine le vendredi. Samedi. Saturday. Samedi. Samedi. Saturday. Pas de projet pour samedi. No plan for Saturday. Pas de projet pour samedi. Dimanche. Sunday. Dimanche. Dimanche. Sunday. Petit déjeuner du dimanche. Sunday morning breakfast. Petit déjeuner du dimanche. Faire. Do. Faire. Faire. Do. J'ai tellement de choses à faire. I have so much work to do. J'ai tellement de choses à faire. Allez. Go. Allez. Allez. Go. Allez au magasin. Go to the store. Allez au magasin. Remember, the goal of this series is to build the vocabulary of the 800 most common words and phrases in French. If that sounds like a lot, don't worry, we can help you. Click the link in the description to access the full list. You also get example sentences, custom flashcard decks, and more learning resources at frenchpod101.com. See you next time. Au revoir. Hey guys, my name is Pierre and I'm from France and welcome to this lesson. Today's lesson will be about what not to pronounce in French. You know, French is really annoying. The way you say it and the way you write it, it's really different. And I'm here to show you that it's not that hard if you know the basics. So first, I would like to introduce you to the common silent letters. First, there is this letter, H. This is maybe the most common one. In French, H has no pronunciation. There is no aspiration, unlike English. When you see H alone, it's always silent in French. For example, in homme, which means man, you don't say the H. Same for haricot, which means beans, or for e, which is the French way to say um when you're hesitating. Then there is this combination, CH. And when there is this combination, you have to say it. It's almost never silent. For example, cheval, which means horse, and then échec, which means chess. But of course, in French, there are many exceptions, and there are those two words are exceptions. Echo, which means echo, like in English, and choral, which means choral, like in English. H is silent here. You have to say just the C, echo, choral. Don't focus too much on those exceptions because uh, usually it's always never silent. But if you really want some examples, just try to remember those two because maybe they are the most common ones. But don't focus too much on exceptions again. Then let's move on to the next letter, which is OR. This letter is quite like never silent, but in some cases, like when you see the combination E or in verbs, you have not to say the or. It's always silent. For example, in the verb manger, which means eat, or parler, to speak, you have not to say the or. It's always that for the verbs, which are with E or. Then you've got some other words that are using the same rule, like premier. Just try to remember this one. It means first. 
And here you don't have to say the OR. Let's move on to the next letter, which is X. This one is really easy. There are three patterns that you have to remember, and then after that, you're done. It's really easy. Those patterns are OA, O, E. You see, I don't say the X. OA, O, E. It's always silent. Here are some examples. Voice, voix in French, no X. Oiseau, which is the plural for birds, so like many birds. Usually you don't have X, but here it's like a plural, the plural form. And then heureux, which is the adjective for happy. Many adjectives have this termination, and you have to say it, and you have not to say X. Let's move on to the next category, which is STPD category. It's almost always silence when it's at the end of a word. To remember that, here is a kind of little trick for you. You can think that French is stupid. And in this word, you see all the letters that are almost always silent. S-T-P-D. Stupid. So here is an example. Le petit loup est méchant, which means the little wolf is nasty. So here there is petit, you don't say the T. Lou, you don't say the P. E, which is kind of an exception. Uh, here you see S and T, and you don't have to say it just for the verb to be. So just remember that when you see EST, this is a common question. Don't say the S and T. But usually when you see the word EST, which means EAST, you have to say it. So this rule is only when you see one letter at the end. When you see more than two letters, this is different. And then there is méchant, T. You don't say the T. But of course, there are exceptions. And here are the two main exceptions that you have to remember. When you say son, fils, you have to say the S. And then there is this little tricky word, plus. Sometimes, plus, you don't say it. You don't say the S. But when you say the, the, when you say the word plus, as more, you mean more, you have to say it, plus. So when there is the S, it means more. When there is not this S, like when you say just plus, but it's the same writing, you don't, it means less. So this is a kind of tricky word. And then there is this combination with S. S is, of, is often the mark of the plural. But sometimes it's not, and you also don't have to pronunciate when you add it after P, T, or D. So here are some examples. Temps, which means time. Debout, which is the plural form for um, pieces. Debout, you add the S because of the plural, and you don't, say ni, you don't say T or S. And then there is D. Tu prends which is uh, you take. And always, when you conjugate verbs, you often have D and S, and you don't say it. So these are the main letters that are silent. STPD, French is stupid. Then you've got some letters that are sometimes silent, sometimes they are not. So you just have to remember which words are like that. Those letters are B, C, F, G, J, L, Z. So here are some examples, like maybe the main ones. Just try to remember them, and then only experience will help you to know which word are not silent. Plomb, which means plumb. You don't say the B. Like the B is quite rare. Usually you don't have words with B at the end of the word. Then you, you have pork which means pork or pig. There is this C, and you don't say it, por. Then this adjective, gentil, with the L, you don't say it. But usually words that ends with an L, you have to say it. So this one is really a big exception, gentil. Clé et serre, qui and dear. There is an F, but you don't say it. 
but many words you have to say the F. So remember that. Then for J, long. It means long. So in English you have to say the G. In French you don't say it. And then this one, Z, you often not say it in French, but sometimes you have to say it. Here you don't say it. Che, which means that I'm going to my place. I'm going to your place. Two, translation for two. Ne, which means nose. Ri, for rice. And assez, for enough. So here are some examples that you have to remember. So, so far we've seen five different patterns. H or X, if you see H alone, or in ER only in verbs, and in the, in the adjective premier, and X in those three patterns, wa, o, e. You have to be silent. You don't say those letters. So this is the first, the three letters that are important for you to remember. And then there is S, T, P, and D, the, which is almost always silent. So this is the main one that you have to remember in addition to those ones. S, T, P, and D. French is stupid. And then you've got those letters that are more tricky. B, C, F, J, L, Z. And you have to remember some examples. And if you really have to remember one category, I think you should really remember with the the, because there are many words with these exceptions. Let's move on to the training part. Here are some sentences. I'm going to read them, and you will see which letters are not or are silent. Try by yourself before I'm going to say it. So here is the first one. Did you try? OK. The answer is, ils ne sont pas assez grands. Ils ne sont pas assez grands. So here, there is this S that is silent, and there is this T, and this S is not silent due to the liaison, which is introduced by the, this vowel, A. In the next lesson, I'm going to deal with the French liaison, so don't worry about that. For now, it's only common silent letters. So you have to say it here, but usually it's silent, so don't worry for that. And then there is the, the Z and the D and S that are silent. Ils ne sont pas assez grands, which means they are not big enough. Ils ne sont pas assez grands. Let's move on to the next one. Did you try? Okay. The answer is, je suis heureux d'être amoureux. Je suis heureux d'être amoureux. So here, again, there is a liaison. Because H is silent and here there is a vowel, but don't worry about that. Here X and X, you don't have to say it. Je suis heureux d'être amoureux. It means I'm happy to be in love. I'm happy to be in love. Je suis heureux d'être amoureux. Next one, this one, is a bit longer. Try by yourself. The answer is, les chevaux courent plus vite que les bœufs. Les chevaux courent plus vite que les bœufs. Les chevaux courent plus vite que les bœufs. Here, there is an S. You don't say it. Here, there is an X. You don't say it. The T here, the S here. Even though it means more, you don't say it. Because here, there is an adjective after that. And when you say plus with an adjective, plus with an adjective, if there is no vowel, you don't say it. So here, plus vite. This S, and then B. You don't say the F, and you don't say the S. But please be careful. When there is no S at the end of B, you have to say the F, buff. But here, you don't say it. This sentence means, the horses run faster than the cows, which is in French, les chevaux courent plus vite que les bœufs. Then, there is this sentence, try by yourself. The answer is, mes cheveux sont trop longs. Mes cheveux sont trop longs. 
it means my hair or too long. And here, all the words have a silent letters. Mes cheveux sont trop longs. Mes cheveux sont trop longs. And this one now, try by yourself. J'ai pris plus de temps que prévu. J'ai pris plus de temps que prévu. So here, there is this silent S. But here, you have to say it. J'ai pris plus de temps, more time. So you have to say it. It's different, even though here it's more, but it's with an adjective. Here, it's plus, alone. So you have to say it, because it means more. Then there is temps, P and S, you don't say it. And this is fine. J'ai pris plus de temps que prévu. I took more time than expected. J'ai pris plus de temps que prévu. Then the last one. Try by yourself. This one is a little, little bit tricky. So the answer is, à l'est du parc, il y a des noix qui ont poussé. À l'est du parc, il y a des noix qui ont poussé. So here, you can see that I have to say est, because it's not the verb to be. It's not the verb être. It's est. So in French, you have to say s and t here. So à l'est. À l'est du parc. Here again, there is a c, but you have to say it. This is not one of the words I wanted you to remember. So parc, you have to say it. Il y a des. You don't say it. Noix. Here again, there is the pattern O I X, so you don't say it. Qui ont. Here there is this silent T. And then, pousser. À l'est du parc, il y a des noix qui ont poussé. At the eastern part of the park, some nuts started to grow. À l'est du parc, il y a des noix qui ont poussé. So did you try and did you manage to do it? It's okay if you don't have a perfect score. Just it's practice. You need to learn and it's like it's it's normal to fail. So you can watch this video again and try the sentences again and remember all those patterns. Next lesson, I will introduce you to the French liaison. But for now, it's only silent letters. That's all for today. If you like the video, please leave a comment on the sections below or you can hit the like button or share this video with your friends. If you haven't subscribed yet, you can do it. The button is down below. And if you want some more resources on learning French, go to our website, frenchpod101.com. You will see many French lessons. And I hope to see you again for more French lessons. Bye, guys. Hey, guys, it's Pierre from France. Welcome back for more videos on French learning. Today's lesson will be about French numbers, les nombres en français, in French. So, French numbers are infamous for being really, really complicated. And I have to admit that this is quite true. But with this lesson, you will know all the details and you will know everything you have to know about numbers in French. And they will not be as difficult as you may think. So first, on the whiteboard, you'll see all the figures between 0 and 99. And I will explain how you can say all those numbers in French. So on this table, you will see blue numbers and black numbers. Blue numbers are numbers that you have to remember. And black numbers are just compositions of blue numbers. So if you remember all the blue words, you will be able to say all the black ones if you know the logic behind the black ones. So let's get started with the first ones, the units. This is quite easy. Like in a lot of languages, you have to remember all that by heart. So let's get started with zero. It's the same than in English, but you have to say zero. Zero. Zero in French. So this is the first one. And one is un. Uh, this is quite hard to say for a non-native French speaker. 
For this, you n, you say it uh, uh, uh. This is quite hard. Don't worry if you cannot do it. Like it's uh, as long as we can understand you. I'm always saying that, but as long as we can understand you, it's definitely okay. Try to do something that is that looks like a uh, and as long as you can, we can understand you. It's fine. So un, uh, un. Uh. The next one is deux, deux, deux. So here you see there is um, an X, and you don't have to say it. But there is a liaison in some cases, like if you have um, a vowel after deux, like deux oiseaux, two birds, deux oiseaux. You have to do the liaison with the X. Be careful with that. If you have troubles with the liaison, you can see one of the other videos I made. So, deux. Next one is trois. Trois. Here again, you, can, you have to do the liaison if there is a vowel. Again, three birds, trois oiseaux. But usually alone, you just say trois. 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 So you don't say the S. Trois. Except if after that there is a vowel. But anyway, trois. Zéro, un, deux, trois. Next one is quatre. Quatre. Four. Quatre. Quatre. Then you have cinq. Five. Cinq. Cinq. So here you say everything. This one, six. It's like in English, but in French, you have to say six. This is quite unusual in French, but here, the X is like an S. Six. Six. So be careful here. There is no liaison that you have to do. It's just the X you have to say S. Six. Six. So be careful with that. Six. Okay, you're good? Okay. Next one. Seven, it's set. Set. This one is a little tricky with the spelling because here there is a P and this P you don't say it. Like, not at all. Only the T. So you have to say set. Set. The next one is huit. Huit. So here, like silent H and huit. Huit. And the last one is neuf. 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 So you know all the units so far. So I'm going to say them once again. Zéro, un, deux, trois, quatre, cinq, six, sept, huit, neuf. Okay. So now you know all the ten first numbers if we include zero. So try to repeat that by yourself and that would be a good practice. And you will remember, you need to get your tongue used to those um, words. So don't hesitate to repeat those words in front of your computer. It's really useful for a good training. So this was quite easy. The second part is a bit uh, more tricky, but still not that complicated. So for the next, um, like from 10 to 19, you have, to, you have new words that you have to remember. And to be exact, it's only until 16 says. So here, when you want to say 10, you say this. And as you can see, or as you can hear, this. Again, there is an X, like 6, but I said S. This. So this one, six, this. So you have to remember that with IX in, in, in numbers, like six, this, it's always an S. This, this. So be careful with that. Then the next one, 11, onze, onze. Then the next one, 11, onze, onze. So here, this is sort of a transformation of un, onze, un, onze. If you have trouble to remember, you can still see some similarities, similarities between this and that. But uh, it's better to learn by heart. So onze, onze. Next one is douze, douze, douze. So here you can see it's, it looks like a bit like two, but still different. But what is hard is sometimes with deux, when you do the liaison, like deux oiseaux, 
it's, it looks like do's. So I'm gonna say 12 birds and two birds and try to catch the difference. Deux oiseaux. Douze oiseaux. Deux oiseaux. Douze oiseaux. Can you catch the difference? It's quite hard, but um, you will learn with practice. But don't hesitate to repeat again what I just said. I'm gonna say it once again. Deux oiseaux. Douze oiseaux. This is quite hard when you're not a native speaker. So be careful with that. If there is no liaison, de, douze, okay, you can catch the difference. But if there is the liaison, be careful. So next one is treize. Treize. So here again, there is the TR, which is kind of the three mark. So treize. Treize. Next one is quatorze. So here there is the quat this kind of Q -U Q -U -A -T mark, 14, 14. As you can see, there is always this Z, E at the end of those figures, those numbers. So, next one is 15, 15. Again, this is more tricky, but you can still think of the Q, but don't mistake with that. So yeah, be careful with that, 15. 15. And the last one of this series is 16, which is 16. 16. So here the S and the S, but be careful not to confuse with the 7. So yeah, 16. 16. I'm gonna say them once again. So, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, so you've got all the figures, all the numbers from 10 to 16. But then, here, it's a bit different. For 17, you have to say 17, 17. So here, as you can see, there is 10, 10, and 7, 7, 7. If you add up 10 and 7, you get 17. This is kind of logical but harder than in other languages. 17, 17, 17. So usually when you speak French, because here there is the dis, the s, that you, the x that you have to say s, and there is also the s here. So usually you just say once the s, because it would be too hard to say both. This set. you can say that, but it's better and faster and easier to say um, 17, 17. So as you can see, I'm just saying set. I'm saying the S only once, okay? So try again to repeat those um, numbers. Um, that's a, that would be a good practice for you. So set 10 plus 7, set. And don't forget to add the dash here. It's really important. And when you compound, you do composition with numbers, you always have to add the dash so be careful with that. This set. This set. Next one is 18. 18. Again, same logic. 10 plus 8. 18. 18. So usually, sometimes it's a bit like a Z, a Z sound. 18. 18. 18. 18. Can you catch the difference? If you just say this, and 8, you hear this 8, this 8. But as it is more, it is easier and like faster in French, usually we say 18, 18. So the, the S sound of the this here become an, a Z sound, 18, 18. And the next one is 19. So here, no tricks. This 9, this 9. It's like you say this and that. This, neuf. This, neuf. So, you say, 17, 18, 19. Here, 17, remember it's S, just one S. Here, 18, so it's like a Z sound, here, 18. And the next one is, 19, 19. So here, same situation, you can say 
Z, uh, Z sound instead of the S, but you're not, uh, it's okay if you don't say it, it's just more easier, like easier and faster, and that's what uh, pe French people say a lot. So let's sum it up. Here, you just say S, D set, D set, just like if there, it was only one S. Here, you can say this, huit, and here, this, neuf, this, huit, this, neuf. But don't be surprised if you see here some sort of Z sound. This, neuf, this, huit, this, neuf, this, huit. So with an S, this, huit, this, huit, this, huit. So here, be careful. Maybe you cannot catch the difference, but it's okay. Just, it's good to know that you can hear some difference in the pronunciation, but be careful. So this was uh, for the, from 10 to 19. As you can see, from 10 to 16, new words that you need to remember. And here, like you just need to do some additions. So with 10 and seven, eight, nine. Set, huit, neuf. So let's move on to the next one. And it's still not that hard. You need to remember those numbers. 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. So it's like 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60. So this is kind of easy. You need to remember those figures. So again, you can see some similarity between uh, the figures. So here, TR, TR. 30, but don't, don't be confused with 13, 30, here again, 40, here really easy, you can see all the, like you can see 5, 5, you can see, so exactly the same, 5, 5, 50, and here like the S and the IX, which is kind of close to the 6, 6 in French, 6. If you're sometimes confused with the first tense digit, just remember that for those ones, it's always with the E at the end. And for those ones, it's always with ot at the end. Even though here it's an E and here it's an A, it's always the same pronunciation, ot, ot, except for 20. But remember that when it's ot, it means like it's um, a multiple of 10. So, 30, 40, 50, 60. So you know how to say those figures, but maybe you want to say 21, 22, 33, and those steps. So here are the rules for that. It's quite easy. Again, you just add up numbers. It's like in English. There's just one little rule that you need to remember. The first one, the, this little rule is with one. You have to add this keyword, E. It's like end in English. So, 20. 21, 21. So here, some specificities of that. 20, when you say 20, this is silent. G, T, you don't say it, just 20, 20. It's like the drink, 20. Like it's like wine in French, 20. But here, if you want to say 21, you add 1, because you do the addition, 20 plus 1. But since it's a 1 in French, you have to say this end. So just remember that. And here you've got the dashes again, but as you can see here, there is a T and here there is a E. So T, silent T, plus vowel. This is a case of a liaison. So you have to say 21, 21. So here, this T is not silent and you have to repeat it. 21, 21. Here, remember, in the liaison, in the lesson about liaison, we said that you never do the liaison with a E. And here it's a E. So you don't do the liaison. 21. 21. So this is the same for all those ones. So 31. 31. It's not written here, but for 41, you say 41. 41. Then, 51, 61, 61, 41, 51. So here, 
you have uh, always the E that you have to say. But it's only with the one. For the others, it's really easy. You just say this, one of those, and then you add the unit. So, for example, 45. You just say 45. 40, 40. And 5, 5. Quite easy for now. So, you can say that for all the numbers here. So, let's get to the last one of this series. 69. 69. 69. 69. So you just put the 60 here, 60, and 9. 69. Quite easy. So to sum, to sum it up for this part, you, you learn 20, 30, 40, 15, and 16. 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Then you just add the unit, except in one situation, if, if it, you want to add a 1, you need to add the E, the E. So here, it's like you learn this word, like for 20, if X is a 2 or 6 or 5 or 4 or 3. Here, you add, you use 20 and 1, and you add this E. And for the other ones, you just use one of those, and you add the unit. So for 22, 23, until 29, and again, the same for those ones. So quite easy, a new word to learn, and then you add up, except for one, where you add the E, the E. Okay, how do you find French numbers so far? It's not that hard, right? You just remember that, and it's okay. You just you do addition, except for this situation that you have to do the addition for those three numbers, 17, 18, 19. It's not that hard, but this is way it starts to be more tricky in French. So let's move on to the next section from 17 to se from 70 to 79. This is kind of weird. Here for 70 you have to say 70, which is the addition of 60 and this 60 plus 10. So as you can see you take this and this 70. So here, it's like you take this series, you use the 60, and you add up all the numbers. So 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69. And then you keep doing that. 70. And then you do the same. 71. Here again, there is the one, so you have to add the E. 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79. So here, for, for this one, you have to keep counting until 19, until 19. So here you add up just from 1 to 9, but for 60, you need to add up until 19. So 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79. Okay, so kind of weird because we didn't stop we stop at 9 here, and here you have to stop at 19. And then, if you remember, here it's already an addition, 10, 9. So here, when you say 79, it's like an addition of 16, 60, 10, and 9. It's kind of weird, but for French people, when you learn that at school, you just don't ask questions, you're just learning that by heart. So you're just used to it. But if you think of the logic behind, it's kind of weird, even for me. So, just remember that for this one, you need to add up 10, 11, until 19, this until 19, 19. And the next one is like completely crazy. 80, 80, 80, 80, we don't have like a word to say 80. 
what we say, we, we say 80, which is like 4 times 20. 4 times 20 equals 80. But in French, you just say 420. 420. 4. So here, 4. 20. So here, 20. Why? I don't know. You just need to remember that. 420. 420. Try to repeat again your numbers. So 420. Here it's like 4 times 20. Try to, re to repeat it. 420. 420. And here you can see that there is in red, there is in red this S. Because again, French is kind of annoying. I know, I'm sorry for that. <laughs> but um, there is this plural. Here you do 4 times 20. And if you do 4 times 20, you need to add an S. Because there is like, there are not just one. Uh, 20, but 4, 20, 420, it's like 420s, so you have to add the S. But what is again tricky is like, that's the only case where you add the S, because if you move on to the next one, because then if you remember 80, you just need to add numbers again, so here 81, 81, so you just add, you take this 80 and you add 1. But here, if there, is, if there is a dash after 20, you just get rid of the S. So the S is only for this case. When you say 80, when you say 80, it's just here that you have to put the S. Then there is no S. There is no logic behind I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry for you guys, because it's really difficult to learn. But if you get used to it, that's going to be fine. So, 81. So... Here, you do 4 times 20 plus 1. 80. 80. 81. And as you can see here, there is no E. In this specific situation, with 80, there is nothing that you have to add. And here, there is no liaison that you have to do with, um, with the T. 80 is kind of really annoying. So, 80 is like a unique word. There is no S, no S, if you add something after that. And you never do the liaison with this specific 80. But here, you had to add the E, and you have to do the liaison. But not here. 80, just remember that it's um, like some sort of isolated word. But there is still the dash. So, let's move on to the next ones. I guess you can say, if you know the logic, you, you understood the logic, so you can try by yourself. Just try by yourself before I try to say it. So, the next one is 82. So, 82. 80. So, 4 times 20. 82. 82. And you do that, so on and so on, until 89. 89. So 9. But again, here, in fact, you don't stop until 9. You keep going until 19. So here, it's like here with 60, where you say 70. Here, you say 90. 90. It's like 4 times 20 plus 10. 90. 91. 92. 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99. So, the, like, the last one is, like, completely crazy. You say 99, which is, like, 4 times 20 plus 10 plus 9. 99. Kind of weird. But if you have trouble with that, like, the math, we don't care about the math here. Just remember that 80. 80 is like um, the way you say 18. You don't care like it's 4 times 20. You just remember that it's 80. 80. And then, when you understand that this 80, you just add the numbers, 81, 82. Just remember that you have to add that up until 19. So, 81, 82, 83, etc. until 99. 
So here you just remember that, 80, you can try to remember that as like a single word, and then you add up. So if you can remember that, that's going to be perfectly fine. 80. When I was young, personally, I didn't realize that this one was 80. I just learned 80 as like a unique word, like 30, 40, 50, 80. I just thought that 80 was like some sort of unique word. And then what I had to do is just add up. So to sum that up, here you know the unit, right? Here you remember that you have to, re you have those new words that are, you have to remember, and then these additions. Then it's always the same logic. You need to remember um, like the first one, like with the zero, but then you just add up with numbers. There is this little exception with the one, e. Then here you just remember 20, 30, so 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and you can remember 80 as a sort of number. So here, see that as a blue one. You should remember that as a blue one. 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 80. And you remember that here you count like from, one, from 0 to 10, uh, from 0 to 9, here again, here again, here again. Here you have, you have to count from 0 to 19. 60, 79, from 0 to 19. And the same for this one. If you remember that like 80 is some sort of unique word, you have to remember that you count from 18, from 0 to 19. So 20 from 0 to 9, from 0 to 9, from 0 to 9, from 0 to 9, from 0 to 19. And this one from 0 to 19. And here you know how to count in French. Maybe you want to know how to say um, like 100 or 1000. So I'm just going to give you that to finish. So here, this one is 100, quite easy. And for this one, it's 1000. Then it's really easy with those two ones. If you want to say uh, like 110, you just say 101. Uh, sorry, I said 10. So, 110, 105, 199, 199, 199. And then it's the same for 1000. Like if you want to say 1001, like 1001, uh, you say 1001, 1010, 1080, 1080. So you can remember those ones, then the additions are really easy. You just need, if you want like to say 2000, you just put the two here and you add like two. Don't focus too much on the dashes. Some, like originally the rule is you don't put dashes, but nowadays you can put dashes. So don't focus too much on that. If you want to remember one rule, just remember that between all the numbers, there is a dash. But we don't write a lot of numbers in letters, so don't focus too much on, on that. So here, 2000. So now you know how to count. Those ones are not that important, just remember that. This is all for French figure, French numbers. This is kind of hard, I know. I guess, I hope that you managed to understood that. And if you didn't manage, you can try to see uh, the panel like the whiteboard and try to repeat again and again. It's a good practice for you. I was only presenting, like uh, I was only introducing you to French numbers from France because in Belgium, for example, you have some different rules, but this is like some sort of standard French. So remember that and you will be fine. That's all for today and I really hope you liked this video and if you did like this video you can uh, subscribe on our channel and click on the like button and leave a comment in the comment section. Um, if you want more resources on French learning you can go on our website uh, frenchpod101.com. Uh, you will find a lot of resources to improve your French 
And that's all for me. It was, Ma it was Pierre. I see you on next time. In this video, you'll learn 20 of the most common words and phrases in French. Hi, everybody. My name is Lia. Welcome to the 800 core French words and phrases video series. This series will teach you the 800 most common words and phrases in French. But there is a twist. With each new lesson in this series, we'll include the previous lessons at the end. So after you've learned the new words and phrases, stick around and review what you learned in previous lessons. Reviewing is one of the most important parts of learning a language. You can also get the full list right now at frenchpod101.com. Click the link in the description to access more example sentences, create your own flashcard deck, and finally master French. Okay, let's get started. First is cacao, cocoa, cacao, cacao, cocoa. Je bois du cacao chaud pendant les journées d'hiver et du thé glacé pendant les journées d'été. I drink hot cocoa on cold winter's days and iced tea on hot summer days. Je bois du cacao chaud pendant les journées d'hiver et du thé glacé pendant les journées d'été. Boisson sans alcool. Soft drink. Boisson sans alcool. Boisson sans alcool. Soft drink. Les boissons sans alcool sont généralement des boissons gazeuses et servies froides. Soft drinks are usually carbonated and served cold. Les boissons sans alcool sont généralement des boissons gazeuses et servies froides. Jus Juice Jus Jus Juice Mon jus de fruits préféré est le jus d'ananas. My favorite fruit juice is pineapple juice. Mon jus de fruits préféré est le jus d'ananas. Bibliothèque. Bookcase. Bibliothèque. Bibliothèque. Bookcase. Il a acheté une bibliothèque pour y mettre ses livres. He bought a bookcase to put his books on. Il a acheté une bibliothèque pour y mettre ses livres. Lit. Bed. Lit. Lit. Bed. Je suis enfin dans mon lit après une longue journée de travail. I'm finally in my bed after a long day of work. Je suis enfin dans mon lit après une longue journée de travail. Miroir. Mirror. Miroir. Miroir. Mirror. Elle a un miroir dans sa chambre. She has a mirror in her room. Elle a un miroir dans sa chambre. Commode. Dresser. Commode. Commode. Dresser. Mes chaussettes et mes sous-vêtements sont dans le tiroir du haut de ma commode. My socks and underwear are in the top drawer of my dresser. Mes chaussettes et mes sous-vêtements sont dans le tiroir du haut 
te va commode. Balayer. Sweep. Balayer. Balayer. Sweep. Mon père balaye les feuilles d'automne. My father is sweeping the autumn leaves. Mon père balaye les feuilles d'automne. Ranger. Put away. Ranger. Ranger. Put away. Range tes jouets, s'il te plaît. Put away your toys, please. Range tes jouets, s'il te plaît. Passez la serpillière. Mop. Passez la serpillière. Passez la serpillière. Mop. J'ai renversé mon jus d'orange, alors je vais passer la serpillière. I spill my orange juice, so I mop the floor. J'ai renversé mon jus d'orange, alors je vais passer la serpillière. Serveuse. Waitress. Serveuse. Serveuse. Waitress. La serveuse tient un plateau avec des verres. The waitress is holding a tray with glasses. La serveuse tient un plateau avec des verres. Degré Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit. Degré Fahrenheit. Degré Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit. L'eau gèle à 32 degrés Fahrenheit. Water freezes at 32 degrés Fahrenheit. L'eau gèle à 32 degrés Fahrenheit. Température. Temperature. Température. Température. Temperature. La température a augmenté jusqu'à 29 degrés aujourd'hui. The temperature has been up to 29 degrees today. La température a augmenté jusqu'à 29 degrés aujourd'hui. Humide. Humid. Humide. Humide. Humid. C'est humide en août au Japon. It's humid in August in Japan. C'est humide en août au Japon. Y avoir du vent. Windy. Y avoir du vent. Y avoir du vent. Windy. Demain, il fera froid et il va y avoir du vent. Donc, porte une écharpe. Tomorrow will be cold and windy. So, wear a scarf. Demain, il fera froid et il va y avoir du vent. Donc, Porte une écharpe. Terrain de jeu. Playground. Terrain de jeu. Terrain de jeu. Playground. Au terrain de jeu, il y a toujours une file d'attente pour les balançoires et pour les toboggans. At the playground, there is always a line for the swings and slides. Au terrain de jeu, 
il y a toujours une file d'attente pour les balançoires et pour les toboggans. Piscine Pool Piscine Piscine Pool On se baigne à la piscine municipale tous les jours en été. We swim at the public pool every day in the summer. On se baigne à la piscine municipale tous les jours en été. Tennis. 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 Tu veux jouer au tennis? Do you want to play tennis? Tu veux jouer au tennis? Basketball. 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 Les filles et les garçons jouent au basketball. The boys and girls are playing basketball. Les filles et les garçons jouent au basketball. Litre. Liter. Litre. Litre. Liter. Ce soir, il a bu un demi-litre de bière. Tonight, he drank half a liter of beer. Ce soir, il a bu un demi-litre de bière. Well done! In this lesson, you expanded your vocabulary and learned 20 new useful words. Click the link in the description and sign up for free at frenchpod101.com to get access to the full list of vocabulary you need for daily life conversations. You'll also get example sentences, custom flashcard decks, and more learning resources. See you next time! Au revoir! Hey watchers, and welcome back for more French words. This week will be top 25 French adjectives. Tout, all, tout, all, or everything. I have to think about everything. Je dois penser à tout. J'ai tout mangé. I ate everything. Because food is good. Oh yeah, tout is for object. If it's for people, like all the people, it will be tous. Grand, tall. Grand, tall. I'm not tall. Je ne suis pas grande. Un grand arbre. A tall tree. <laughs> Petit, small. Petit, small, a small snail, un petit escargot. It's going to be like this. <coughs> tout petit, tout petit. So small, so small. Même, even, same. Même, even, or same. C'est le même, it's the same. Doing it the same way, le faire de la même manière. Autre, other, autre, other. For example, if you are shopping for, let's say, shirts and you want the same in another color, l'avez-vous dans une autre couleur? Do you have it in another color? Or do you have it in another size? Est-ce que vous l'avez dans une autre taille? Seul, only, lonely. Seul, only, can also mean lonely. <laughs> Un seul, only one. Going alone, j'y vais seul. Ta -ta -ta. No, don't go. Yes, I'm going alone. No, take me with you. No, it's too dangerous. Or, je me sens seul. I'm feeling lonely. Jeune, young. Jeune, young. I'm still young. Je suis encore jeune. I'm not that old. Come on. Oh, les jeunes. Or, oh, are the youngsters. Premier, first. Premier, first. Je suis le premier. I'm the first. Be the first to comment. Soyez le premier à commenter. 
comment right now, comment right now, comment right now. Bon, good, bon, good. This meal is so good, ce plat est trop bon. Or, oh, that's good, ah, c'est bon. Or, it also means, yeah, it's okay, c'est bon. Quel, which, quel, which, which one is it? Lequel est-ce? Beau, beautiful. I'm beautiful. Je suis belle. Oh. Beau is masculine and belle is feminine. C'est trop beau. This is so beautiful. You can hear young people saying that. But, wow, c'est trop beau. Wow, it's so beautiful. Vieux, old. Vieux, old. I'm getting old. Je me fais vieux. Which is also masculine and feminine will be vieille. Je me fais vieille. Noir, black. Noir, black. Je porte toujours des t-shirts noirs. I'm always wearing black shirts. You guys always complain that I'm only wearing black shirts. I'm sorry. <laughs> nouveau. New. Uh, nouveau. New. It's brand new. C'est tout nouveau. Dernier. Last. Dernier. Last. I always finish last. Je finis toujours en dernier. <laughs> Blanc. White. Blanc. White. I'm wearing a white shirt today. Je porte une chemise blanche aujourd'hui. Or, clouds are white. Les nuages sont blancs. Cher, expensive. Cher, expensive. I never buy expensive stuff. Je n'achète jamais des trucs chers. So yeah, if you go to a Sunday market, you will have a lot of people uh, trying to catch you and be, hey, it's not expensive, buy it, buy it. I make it not expensive for you. C'est pas cher, c'est pas cher. <laughs> Long, 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 long. I have long hair. Again. J'ai les cheveux longs. Une longue journée. A long day. Today is going to be a long day. Pauvre, poor. Pauvre, poor. When you want to say, ah, oh, it's this person is kind of oh, miserable or something bad happened to them, you say, ah, oh, le pauvre. Ah, oh, poor dear. Plein, full. Plein, full. C'est plein de joie. It's full of joy. Ooh. Vrai, real. Vrai, real. Or can also be true. Is that true? Est-ce que c'est vrai? Oh my, god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Is that for real? C'est vrai? No. In French, we'd be like, c'est pas vrai. Gentil. Nice. Gentil. Nice. I'm a nice person. Je suis une gentille personne. Bas. Low. Bas, low, a low level, un niveau bas. Gros, big, gros, big, un gros éléphant, a big elephant, un gros gâteau, a big cake. Doux, soft, doux, soft, oh, fluffy, I like the word fluffy better. A soft towel, une serviette douce, when you just wash them and they're all fluffy and then you can put your face in it. I like to put my face in kitten and rub them like this because they're so fluffy. Les chatons, c'est doux. Kittens are soft. Soft, kitty, warm, kitty, needs a ball of fur. Doux, chaton, chaud, chaton, cause. Uh, petite boule de poil. Thank you for watching our top 25 adjectives and don't forget to subscribe for more French words and we'll see you next time. Bye! <coughs> French is not difficult. Le français n'est pas difficile. How are your French listening skills? First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Un homme et une femme regardent le menu d'un restaurant. Qu'a commandé le monsieur? Que voulez-vous commander? La pizza a l'air délicieuse. Je vais prendre ça. J'ai déjà mangé une pizza hier, donc. Ah! Et pourquoi pas ce hamburger Ça m'a l'air bien, je prends ça. 
Qu'a commandé le monsieur Un homme et une femme regardent le menu d'un restaurant. Qu'a commandé le monsieur Que voulez-vous commander La pizza a l'air délicieuse. Je vais prendre ça. J'ai déjà mangé une pizza hier, donc. Ah, et pourquoi pas ce hamburger Ça m'a l'air bien. Je prends ça. Did you get it right I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. Hey, watchers! This week we're going to be doing top 25 French nouns. So let's start right now. Homme, man. So, homme, man. Le chien est le meilleur ami de l'homme. Dog is man's best friend. Oh, who is a doggy? Who is a doggy? Who is a fluffy doggy? No, doggy. I should stop doing the doggy. Ami, friend. Ami, friend. Best friend, mon meilleur ami. I like hanging out with my friend. J'aime traîner avec mes amis. When I was little, I didn't have friends. Quand j'étais petite, je n'avais pas d'amis. <laughs> so sad. Femme, woman. Next one is femme, woman. I'm a woman. Je suis une femme. Jour, day. Jour, day. All day, toute la journée. Il fait jour. It's day, morning. I'm not a morning person. I don't like day, I like night. Je n'aime pas le jour, j'aime la nuit. Mer, si, mer, si. The boat on the sea. Un bateau sur la mer. I used to live on a boat on the sea. True story. Ah, oh, there is this song about the sea. La mer. On voit danser le long des golfs de terre. The sea that we see dancing along the clear coast or something like that. Tiens, temps, time, temps, time. Uh, temps can also be weather. Quel temps il fait? What's the weather today? And time is, le temps passe vite. Time goes fast. Or do you need more time? Main, hand, main, hand. Oh, les mains. I hurt my hand yesterday. Je me suis fait mal aux mains hier. Because I was playing baseball without a glove and it hurts so bad. Pa! <laughs> and smashes into your hand. Uh, se laver les mains. To wash your hand. Wash hands. Ooh. I'm sorry, tissue. Chose, sink, chose, sink, plein de choses, many things. Or when you don't know what word to put in a sentence, you can just use the chose, quelque chose, something. La chose est une main. The thing is a hand. Vie. Life, having an easy life, avoir la vie facile. And be laser. Ah. Yeux, eyes, yeux, <laughs> eyes. So be careful in French because the plural is very different. So it's un oeil and les yeux. Boo. Your eyes are so beautiful. T'as de beaux yeux. Heure, time, heure, time. What time is it? Il est quelle heure? But heure also mean hour, and not only time. Monde, world. Monde, world. To travel around the world. Voyager autour du monde. I like traveling around the world. The World Cup, la coupe du monde. <coughs> Enfant, child. Enfant, child. To adopt a child. Adopter un enfant. I think it's a better solution for the world. When you are a child, you go to school. Les enfants vont à l'école. Ou quand on est un enfant, on va à l'école. Foi. Time. Foi. Time. It's like multiplier. Like two times four. Deux fois quatre. Or time, like the number of time you do something. I went two times to see this movie because it was so good. Je suis allé voir ce film deux fois parce qu'il était trop bien. 
be careful with the writing on this one because there are many words that can be pronounced uh, foi, but with a different ending. Moment, moment, take just a moment. Or like it will take a really short amount of time. Ça va prendre juste un moment. Depending on how you say it, actually, it can vary. Because if you say, like, ça va prendre un moment, it means it will take a long time, dude. You better be patient. Tête, head. Tête, head. Se cogner la tête, to bump your head. Avoir la tête sur les épaules. Having your head on your shoulders, meaning you have a straight head and a clear vision of what you want to do and be very down to earth. Père, father, père, father. I like my father. J'aime mon papa. <laughs> Un père de famille, the family's father, meaning he's like the head of the family and all responsible and hardworking and providing for everyone. Good daddy. Fille, girl, fille, girl. I'm a girl, she says in fee. Before I was a woman, but I got downgraded. No, I'm a girl. A cute girl. Girls just want to have fun. The fee will just s'amuser. Bad girl, bad. You're a bad girl. Villain fee, villain. Boo. <laughs> Coeur, heart. Coeur, heart. Cute. Potato. Potato. Avoir le coeur sur la main. Having your heart on your hand is a French expression which means uh, being very generous. To hear your heart beat. Entendre son cœur battre. I can hear it at night. Poum, 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 poum. And then you put freaky music behind it. Poum, 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 poum. An, year, an, year, one year, un an, or two years, deux ans. J'ai 26 ans. I'm 26. Terre, earth, ground, soil. Terre with a capital letter will be earth, the planet we live on, and terre with no capital letter will be the earth you walk on. So if you mix earth and water, it makes mud. Si vous mélangez de la terre et de l'eau, ça fait de la boue. And then you can apply it as a mask on your face. Monsieur, sir, monsieur, sir. Monsieur, Monsieur, Madame. <laughs> monsieur is a singular and Monsieur will be plural. Les Messieurs ont des jolies moustaches. Moustache. <laughs> I like that word. When you're a kid, you say, eh, teacher, what was in your hand? And then when you grow up and go to high school, it's like, more like, sir or Monsieur, when you have a question. If you want to be really polite, you can put Monsieur before the family name of someone. Monsieur Dupont or Monsieur Durand which are really common French family names. Voix, voice, voix, voice. There is a TV show called The Voice, right? La voix. Avoir une belle voix, having a nice voice. La, la. Maison, house, house, maison. This is my house, c'est ma maison. Yeah, I live in a greenish house and I stay here all day in a tiny window. And talk to you guys. I don't have a house. Je n'ai pas de maison. Cat. Chat. Cats. Un chat. I'm a cat person. Je suis une personne à chat. I like cats. J'aime les chats. You're so cute and fluffy. Come on. I can only think about kittens right now. <laughs> so thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more French words and we'll see you next time. Bye. Ah, French people be so fancy. Alia, let me grab you! The end! Hi everyone! Welcome to the Ultimate French Pronunciation Guide. In this lesson, you'll learn seven French vowels. I, U, U, E, E, O, E. Some vowels may be hard for you to distinguish, especially for English speakers, so make sure you listen carefully. Are you ready? 
Then let's get started. The first vowel is I, I, fini, si. It's identical to the double E sound in the word si. I, I. I, I. The next vowel is U, chute, ru, tu. This is identical to the previous sound except that the lips are rounded. Try saying the E in C while rounding your lips. Now listen to Miley's. U, U. The next vowel is U, Ku, Klun, Ru. It's identical to the double O sound in the word boot. U, U. Ooh. Ooh. The next vowel is Ich marche Che Pied This is similar to the A sound in the word play. However, try not to carry over the Y sound too much. Try to relax your jaw and say it as if you're allowing the vowel to spill out from your mouth. Listen to Miley's. Ich, 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 The next vowel is ö, je nicht, que, se. This is identical to the previous sound, except that the lips are rounded. Ö. Uh, uh, uh. The next vowel is O, O, to, so. This is quite similar to the two previous sounds, except that it's pronounced at the back of the mouth. It's a little bit like the O sound in the word O. But try not to carry over the W sound too much. Listen to Miley's. O, 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 O. And the last vowel is E, Lush, Monsieur, S. It's identical to the E sound at the end of the word problem. Uh, 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 uh. Well done. You've just learned seven vowel sounds in French. Ich, ich, u, ich. Uh, uh, uh. In the next lesson, you'll learn the remaining nine French vowel sounds. Which vowel sound was the most difficult for you to learn? Please comment and share your thoughts. See you in the next Ultimate French Pronunciation Guide lesson. Welcome to Introduction to French. My name is Alicia, and I'm joined by... Hi everyone, I'm Candice. In this lesson, you'll learn the basics of French pronunciation. In the previous lesson, you learned that roughly 30% of all English words share their origins with French words. Because of this, French pronunciation is quite similar to English. 
In fact, there are more common sounds than there are different ones. For example, bou, sandwich, dain, gain. Chances are you can imitate these words without much difficulty because these words use common sounds that exist in English. Of course, there are a few differences between French and English sounds too. Agneau, roux, huit, cent. These unfamiliar sounds are the ones that you need to focus on and practice. Let's take a look at some of those sounds. A big aspect of French pronunciation relates to nasalization. Nasalization simply means to pronounce something through the nose. For example, the M and N sounds are considered nasal consonants because the air escapes your nose when you pronounce these sounds. Mm. Mm. In French, some vowels can be pronounced through the mouth or through the nose. Compare oral vowels with nasal vowels in French. Une, un, sonne, son, certaine, certain. Nasal vowels are used often in French, so it's important that you learn them in the near future. Another unique French sound is the guttural R sound. <laughs> Roux, resté, ri. This R sound is pronounced at the back of the mouth. It sounds almost as if you're gargling. <sighs> Lastly, let's take a look at the French U sound. U, chute, rue, tu. To pronounce this sound, try saying E as in C. And then from there, slowly run your lips. U. French is renowned for being a language full of silent letters, particularly at the end of words. Consider the following. Je vais manger au restaurant. The S in the word VE, the R in the word manger, and the T at the end of restaurant are all silent letters. We don't actually pronounce them in French. Listen to it again. Je vais manger au restaurant. In fact, most of the time, the last letter of a French word is actually silent. Cou, froid, vous. There are, of course, exceptions to this rule. Let's look at the most common case when the next word starts with a vowel. Ordinarily, the final letter of a French word is silent. Vous. The final S in this word is silent, but when the next word begins with a vowel, vous avez, the S is no longer silent and is instead pronounced like a Z sound. Vous avez. The two words are connected by the Z sound and pronounced as if they were a single word. This linking of words through the activation of the silent letter is a common phenomenon in French known as liaison. It's the special quality which makes French sound the way that it does. Let's look at a few more examples of liaison in action. Tout, tout homme, un, un ami, neuf, neuf ans, gentil, gentil enfant. Liaisons may seem a little difficult to learn at first, but they will only get easier and more intuitive by the time you get used to pronouncing whole sentences in French. Okay, let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. In this lesson, you learned that there are more familiar sounds than unfamiliar sounds in French. We showed you some unfamiliar sounds like nasal vowels, the guttural R, and the French U. You also learned that the final letter in a French word is usually silent, and that the letter becomes active if the next word starts with a vowel. This process is known as liaison. We've covered only the basics of French pronunciation, if you're interested in learning more, check out the entire course we created, named The Ultimate Guide to French Pronunciation. In that course, we cover and break down every single sound in the French language, showing you mouth and tongue positioning and giving you tips to help you perfect your French pronunciation. In the next lesson, we'll introduce you to the basics of French grammar, where you'll learn about French word order and how to build basic phrases in French. See you in the next lesson. Bye! Bye!
Hi everybody, Candice here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer some of your most common French questions. The question for this lesson is, when do you use the direct object pronouns le, la, and les versus the indirect object pronouns lui and leur? Sometimes you want to shorten a sentence with a pronoun rather than use the same noun again. This is similar to how we use it in English. In place of nouns, we have already said, such as, did you see that movie yesterday? Yes, I saw it. In French, pronouns come right before a verb to simplify a sentence. For example, if your friend asks you, tu aimes ce roman? Do you like this novel? Instead of, oui, j'aime ce roman. Yes, I like this novel. You might say, oui, je l'aime. Yes, I like it. In this case, you put the pronoun after the subject, je, and before the verb, aimer. But how do you know which pronoun to use? Le, la, and les are used with nouns that are directly attached to the verb. That means you don't need the preposition a. For example, aimer, meaning to like, is one of those verbs. For aimer, we use the L apostrophe in the singular, because aimer begins with a vowel. In this case, je l'aime. In the plural, we would use les. So if you were referring to several novels, you'd say je les aime. Here's another example. La porte est ouverte. Je la ferme. The door is open. I'm closing it. La here refers to la porte, the door, which is feminine. Here's one in the masculine. Someone says, le document est sur la table. The document is on the table. You respond, je ne le trouve pas. I can't find it. Or, I don't find it. Le, before trouve, refers to le document. Lui and leur, on the other hand, are usually only for people, not things. Verbs that use lui and leur use the preposition à. The most common example is probably parler. For example, je parle souvent à ma sœur. I speak often with my sister. Becomes, je lui parle souvent. Here, lui, which would be similar to the English with her, refers to ma sœur, which would be my sister. If you're talking about more than one person, you would use leur. I am talking to my brothers, would be je parle à mes frères. With the pronoun, it would become je leur parle, meaning I am talking to them. In the common form, you put the pronoun after the verb with a hyphen that applies to both forms of pronouns. So tell them the truth would be dis-leur la vérité. Another example in the common form is the door is open, close it. La porte est ouverte, ferme-la. Did you get it? Not so bad, right? If you have any more questions, please leave them in the comments below and I try to answer them. A bientôt, see you soon. Hey watchers and welcome to this week's new top word and this week will be 25 French verbs. Here we go. Être, to be, to be or not to be. Être ou ne pas être. What do you want to be when you grow up? Qu'est-ce que tu veux être plus tard? Or, qu'est-ce que tu veux être quand tu grandiras? Avoir, to have. Don't forget that verbs in French are conjugated, so it's a pain to learn. You never use avoir by itself. I have, j'ai. J'ai des cheveux bruns. I have brown hair. Faire, to do. Faire, something, something. Like, faire du vélo would be like to bike, but you actually, you are doing bike. Faire la cuisine, to cook, to do the cooking, or something like that. What do you like to do? Qu'est-ce que tu aimes faire? If you are asking for hobbies, tell me what you like to do in the comments, watchers.
Dire, to say. Je dis beaucoup de bêtises. I say a lot of silly things. But that's why you like me. What can I say? Qu'est-ce que je peux dire? I don't know. Pouvoir. Can. Yes, you can. Oui, nous pouvons. Oui, nous pouvons. Can you do a Rubik's Cube? Est-ce que tu peux faire un Rubik's Cube? Tchaka, tchaka, tchaka. Allez, to go. Just go. Va-t'en. Go away. You don't use it with French people. They're gonna get mad at you. Go walking. Allez, se balader. Or go in the kitchen. Allez à la cuisine. To go on a trip. Allez voyager. Voir, to see. I can't see anything. Je peux rien voir. Boo. <laughs> Peekaboo. You cannot see me. On ne peut pas me voir. Yeah. Vouloir, to want. I want, I want to rock right now. Je veux rocker maintenant. Je veux, je veux rocker maintenant. Sounds so lame. I want candy. Je veux des bonbons. What do I want? Everything. I want lasagna. Je veux des lasagnes. I'm not Garfield. Venir, to come. Tu dois venir t'amuser avec nous. Please come play with us. <laughs> come to Mundo. You can come with us. Tu peux venir avec nous. Is the way French people will invite you. So, yeah, sure, come. Ouais, viens. Devoir, must. Devoir is also homework, because it's something you must do. It also means duty. It's an eclectic word. You can use it for so many things. You have to do your homework. Tu dois faire tes devoirs. Je dois faire la vaisselle. I have to do the dishes. Or else it stinks. Prendre, to take. You can take the train, prendre le train, or you can take something, prendre quelque chose. You can take your time, prendre son temps. Lazy. Trouver, to find. I found something. J'ai trouvé quelque chose. It's a bottle of water again, because that's my only prop for today. Yeah, I found the solution. J'ai trouvé la solution. Did I find the solution? No, I didn't, because Mike messed it up. <laughs> Red should go here, and you have to cross. Then you do the next one. <laughs> J'ai trouvé de quoi manger. I found something to eat. Finally, I won't be starving anymore. Donner, to give. To give money, donner de l'argent. Please give money to Leah. <laughs> donner un cadeau for someone's birthday. To give a present. Falloir, need to. It's more have to than need to. Ouais. Need to, I need to do my hair. Il faut que je me coupe les cheveux. Il faut que je pense à une phrase. I need to think of a sentence. Ah, this one, it fits. Parler, to speak. You can speak a language. Parler une langue. Speak French. Parler français. My chair is squeaky. And my spoon is too big. Je te parle plus. I'm not speaking to you anymore. <coughs> Mettre, to put. To put something on your head. Mettre quelque chose sur sa tête. Like a hat. To put your clothes on. Mettre ses vêtements. Savoir, to know. I know everything. Je sais tout. Remember, no one knows everything. Souvenez-vous, personne ne sait tout. Savoir in French is also knowledge. It's the same word. Passer, to pass. On lui passe un truc. To pass something on. Also work in sport. Pass, pass, pass. But I won't catch it. I did. Regarder, to watch. To watch a movie. Regarder un film. To watch a match. Regarder un match of whatever you want. Go Jinx! Go Jinx! Go Mundo! Go Red Team! Go Soccer Team! Go Mundo! Watching the news. Regardez les nouvelles. Aimer, like. I like you. Poo. Aimer is also to love. So you can like someone or love someone, it will be the same. J'aime le chocolat. I like chocolate. There's a guy that I like. No one I say this is my life. That's a South Park song. Because I did it wrong. Croire, to believe. I believe I can fly. Je crois que je peux voler. Sounds so lame. Je crois en toi. I believe in you. You can do it. You can learn French. Go watchers. Manger, to eat. I believe it's time to eat. Je crois qu'il est l'heure de manger. It's always time to eat. I like to eat. J'aime manger, which is j'aime. Again, see, you can use it for stuff you like to do, like eating. Nom, 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 nom. What do you like to eat, by the way? Leave your favorite food in the comments. Boire, to drink. This is what I said my water bottle prop all along. Leah Strong! To drink. It's making bubbles. To drink a fruit juice. 
boire un jus de fruits. Go for the healthy choice. Jouer, to play. Let's go play again! Yay! Oh, 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 oh. To play a video game. Jouer à des jeux vidéo. I like playing by myself. J'aime, <rire> c'est tout ça. Parler, to talk. To make small talk. Parler de tout et de rien. So don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you next time for a new category of world. A bientôt! See you next time! Oui, 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 non, 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 non. By the moon and the stars in the sky. And ice cream! But I like ice cream better. And if you don't do your video correctly, you know what happens? Mundo! Stand for Jinx! <laughs>
Noël, maïs. The sedilla is a sea with a special hook underneath. The function of the sedilla is simple. It changes the pronunciation of the letter C from a K to an S, S sound. So ordinarily, a French C would be pronounced Cassé. But a sedilla would be pronounced Sa. Like an S sound. Like English, French capitalizes the first letter at the beginning of a sentence. Je mange du pain. Unlike English, however, there are a number of words which are not capitalized in French. The personal pronoun for I is capitalized in English, but not in French. Il pense que je suis bête. For example, days of the week are capitalized in English, but not in French. Lundi, mardi, mercredi. Months of the year aren't capitalized either. Janvier, février, mars. Nor are languages. Le français, l'anglais, le russe. Consider the following example. Le 14 juillet, c'est la fête nationale française. Notice how July and French are not capitalized. J'apprends l'espagnol. I is capitalized here because it's the first letter at the beginning of a sentence, but Spanish isn't. There are some more capitalization rules, but those are the most common ones you'll encounter. Well done! Let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. In this lesson, you learned that French uses the same Latin alphabet as English, consisting of 26 letters. Additionally, there's also the acute accent, grave accent, circumflex, diaresis, and sedilla, which are used to accentuate certain letters. You also learned that I, days, months, and languages aren't capitalized in French. In the next lesson, you'll be entering French Boot Camp, where you'll learn beginner phrases to get you speaking French right away. See you in the next lesson. Bye! Bye! Welcome to French Culture Class by FrenchPod101.com. Can you learn French by watching TV? You are about to find out. Salut! Je suis Pierre. Hi everyone, I'm Pierre. In this lesson, you'll learn about the best series and TV shows for French learners. And for series and TV shows, we mean entertaining series that you can use to boost your French learning. No matter your level or taste, we have a show for you. And in this video, you'll learn about the most interesting TV shows for all levels and all types of learners, from glamour lovers to French history fanatics. Let's start with the best shows for TV drama lovers. First is 10%. 10%. This is a show between fiction and reality and is ongoing with two seasons to date. It is perfect for intermediate French learners and is available on Netflix and FrenchTV.fr. If you love French cinema and wish you could sneak behind the scenes, 10% might just make your dream come true. In each episode, a famous French actor such as Christophe Lambert and Juliette Binoche plays his or her own role. It's a unique show. Another good show for TV drama lovers is Les Bracelets Rouges. Les Bracelets Rouges. The topic is more serious, but it includes some fun moments. It is about some teenagers that live in a hospital and how they live their life even though some are disabled or some are suffering from a serious disease. If you are a soap opera lover and love to cry out all the heavy feelings in your heart by watching TV shows, then you should really watch Plus Belle La Vie. Plus Belle La Vie. This soap opera has been around for quite a while, and by quite a while, we mean for 10 years. They have produced 14 seasons already, and it will definitely captivate the hearts of all the intermediate French learners. One of the best parts of this show that kept the people talking is the fictitious district of Marseille, Le Mistral. The inhabitants of Le Mistral have captured the attention of the French for a long time. With its 3,500 episodes, we won't be surprised if you learn the language perfectly after watching all of them. Now, let's move on to some reality shows. The most popular of all is probably Koh Lanta. Koh Lanta. This show didn't make it to 22 seasons to date for no reason. 
the exciting lives of two teams of candidates stranded on a desert island and the difficult challenges they have to fight in order to survive will leave you in awe. This show is no doubt one of the best out there that won't just serve as entertainment, but a great French show for both beginners and more advanced students to master the language without difficulty as well. Another good show is Danse avec les stars. Danse avec les stars. This is the French version of the British show Strictly Come Dancing. It is available on YouTube or tf1.fr and it's a fantastic French show for those just beginning to learn the language. Every season, three famous French dancers judge the dance performances of well-known French artists, singers, actors, comedians and models. Luckily for them, the candidates are coached by their partners who are also famous French dancers. Is there anything similar in your country? Admit it, one of the main reasons to study French is to learn how to read and speak the names of French food. Don't worry, food lovers, we are here to help. Check out the reality show Un Dîner Presque Parfait. Un Dîner Presque Parfait. This program earned its own reputation as a staple in French pop culture, which means that you learn a lot of things from watching it. The show finished up after nine seasons, but you can watch it on YouTube and sixplay.fr. It is inspired from the British reality show Come Dine With Me. Four people face each other in a friendly competition wherein French hospitality and gastronomy is at stake. Un dîner presque parfait will keep you wondering which person performs the most lavish, perfectly arranged dinner party for the three others. Would you be interested in joining this type of competition? Okay, now let's proceed to another famous French show called Top Chef. Top Chef. This is a reality show perfect for beginners, not just to sharpen their French vocabulary, but to level up their culinary level as well. This series is still running with nine seasons to date and they are all found on YouTube and sixplay.fr. Some of the famous people included in the cast are Cyril Lignac and Hélène Darroze. Top Chef helps showcase the skills of exceptionally talented amateurs by putting them up in a competition, impressing four of France's best chefs with their most delicious self-made recipes. All of the 14 talented candidates may or may not have professional training but their biggest dream is to open their own restaurant. At the fight to stay in the show and not be eliminated, you'll learn French food names and correct pronunciation in no time as well. We also made sure to include Le Meilleur Pâtissier in our list of the best series and TV shows for French learners under the food category. Le Meilleur Pâtissier. Some of the most famous actors and actresses that are a part of this show are Cyril Lignac, again, Jacqueline Mercorelli, and Pierre Hermé. This talented cast didn't disappoint its viewers by introducing some of the most delicious desserts there are on the planet. It's almost similar to Top Chef, but it focuses on French food favorite, la pâtisserie. It's not just one of the best French cooking shows excellent for beginners. It's also great entertainment that will keep you at the edge of your seat as the contestants compete to win the judge's favor through various exciting challenges. Do you have a sweet tooth like us? If yes, then this show is perfect for you. You can watch it on YouTube and sixplay.fr. Up next, some of the best series and TV shows for all the fun French learners. The first series we want you to watch is Un gars, une fille. Un gars, une fille. This comedy show lasted for five seasons, starring Jean Dujardin and Alexandra Lamy. It's lighthearted and is perfect for beginners and advanced learners. Be sure to check it out on YouTube so you can see what we are talking about. Another fun show you'll surely love and can only be found on friendstv.fr is H. Just H. H stands for Hôpital. Hôpital. It's a parody of famous hospital series that talks about the inner life of seemingly dysfunctional hospitals, starring some of the most famous French comedians, Jamel Debbouze and Eric Ramsey. Although the show only made it for seasons, it is full of French lessons, making it a must-watch series for intermediate French learners. Another hilarious comedy show we highly recommend for beginners is Bref. Bref. It means in short. The main cast, Kian Kojandi and Bérangère Krief, gave justice to the story of the life of an average French millennial through a series of brief scenes, making their viewers laugh and cry at the same time. 
It's a new series, but it's already considered a common French pop culture reference. Have you watched a show before that made you laugh and cry at the same time? It's crazy to think, but a very good show can really affect you that way. Next is Camelot. Camelot. This is a one-of-a-kind historical comedy show. It made it to our list because any intermediate or expert French student can totally learn a lot from it. The sarcastic take on King Arthur's court shows how much the French love to make fun of the English. The show may have ended after six seasons, but it surely left its mark on people who want to have a good laugh. Search it on sixplay.fr if you ever decide to give this one a shot. Last but not least is Au Service de la France. Au Service de la France. Currently available on Netflix and Arte.tv, A-R-T-E dot TV, Au Service de la France demonstrates the perfect illustration of self-deprecation, which is exactly the source of French humor. It's similar to OSS 117 movies, wherein the French Secret Service during the 60s are made fun of. The first season just started, which means advanced learners can still watch it without worrying about getting behind. Now, it's time to introduce the best series for French learners who are fascinated with France's rich history. Fortunately, French TV leveled up the regular high school social studies and classes by creating some of the best TV shows, making history lessons more interesting to learn. First on our list is Versailles. Versailles, like the city. Versailles is suitable for intermediate learners. It's a historical drama that lasted three seasons and can now be found on mycanal.fr. Any history geek will find this show super educational. The court of the Roi Soleil is everyone's favorite period of France history, and if you're into glorious decor, colorful costumes, and mysterious intrigues of this time period, then this show should be on the top of your must-watch TV shows. For all the advanced French learning students, make sure to look up Un Village Français on francetv.fr. Un Village Français. This is another exciting historical series that made it up to seven seasons. In spite of the sensitivity of the subject, Un Village Français was brave enough to talk about World War II's occupation and has kept the people talking because of its surprising, intelligent, yet famous take on the subject. In this series, you'll learn about the collaboration, resistance, communism, loss, and courage shown by the inhabitants of a fictitious French village from the year 1939 to 1945. Does your country talk about history through TV shows? We didn't forget all the aspiring detectives and advanced French learners out there who are curious about French thriller series. One of the most recent mystery shows in France that lasted after two seasons is Les Revenants. Les Revenants. This show is great for all advanced learners who love thrillers with a supernatural twist. It's about a few individuals who live in a small mountain town and who came back from the dead. This is perfect if you like scary stories. Next up is Engrenage. Engrenage. This show is best for advanced learners to watch, especially if you love everything that has to do with cups. It's inspired by real affairs and will soon be available in the UK and in the US. If you're curious, go over to mycanal.fr and watch the entire seven seasons. This intense thriller will not disappoint you. Another great series is Malatera. Malatera. It ended with only one season, but we highly recommend every advanced French learners to watch this French adaptation of Broadchurch set in the beautiful landscapes of the island of Corsica. This spine-chilling series will turn you into a real detective once you learn about a boy's corpse discovered on the beach and the secrets hidden by the nearby villages. It's available on Netflix and frenchtv.fr. If you're looking for another thriller to watch, consider La Forêt. La Forêt, the forest. The story revolves around a teenager's body found in a forest and the past of an orphan and a wild man. Pretty interesting, right? This show will be of great advantage for all advanced French students as it offers an opportunity to learn and be entertained at the same time. Check it out on Netflix now. Another suspense series perfect for those who are already feeling confident with the French language is La Mante. La Mante. It only has one season and is available on Netflix and tf1.fr. 
It's the story of a serial killer's son who became a cop forced to face his past after a mysterious person copies his mother's crimes. What do you think you would do if you found out you were the son of a serial killer? We know it's kind of morbid to think that, but that's exactly why you should really watch La Mante to end your curiosity. We also have some suggestions for the young learners. The French take animation shows very seriously, and that's one of the reasons why there are French artists working at Disney and Pixar Studio right now to help create amazing shows like the ones we'll be sharing with you today. The first one is Les Aventures de Tintin. Les Aventures de Tintin. Available on Netflix, FrenchTV.fr and YouTube, this animated mystery is the French adaptation of a young boy's adventures named Tintin. Any youngsters will surely enjoy this fantastic TV show while learning the French language as well. Another great show perfect for a beginner French student who loves action is Code Lyoko. Code Lyoko. This series is about a group of tech-savvy teenagers who go into battle with a demonic entity attempting to control the school. Next is Totally Spies. Totally Spies. This is another great show suitable for young learners. This kid-friendly version of Charlie's Angels that involves three teenage girls who live a double life as spies will keep you and your little kids entertained and you learn French at the same time. Make sure to check it out on tf1.fr or on YouTube. Next up is Miracles. Miracles. It's an exciting cartoon and it's currently on its second season. Beginners and advanced students can enjoy watching it on Netflix and join superheroes Ladybug and Le Chat Noir in their adventures around the city of Paris. Keep in mind that most of the American cartoons have a dub version in French. Don't hesitate to check that as well. This is the case for Avatar The Last Airbender, for instance. And because we love our viewers so much, we made a list of shows that French learners should stay away from. I repeat, stay away from. Let's see why. First is Les Marseillais. Les Marseillais. French people were disappointed by this show mainly because of the poor dialogues. Also, the accent in this series is not something that you will understand easily. When you learn French, it's better to listen to people that have a standard accent, like the one from Paris. Le Chalet is the last show we recommend that French learners should avoid watching. The actors in this show speak too quickly and don't sound normal at all. Stay away from it. In this lesson, you learn about many kinds of TV shows that are not just meant to entertain, but are beneficial in your French learning as well. We also give you the sites where these shows can be found. Want to learn the language fast with PDF cheat sheets? You get cheat sheets for all kinds of topics, travel, hobbies, love, and much more. And you learn all of the must-know words and phrases for each. So click the link in this lesson description and sign up for a free lifetime account to get them. That's it for today. See you next time. À la prochaine. Hey, watchers, and welcome back to Top Words. This week will be about top 10 hardest words to pronounce. So, what's hard to pronounce in French? Heureux, happy. Heureux. Is it so hard to pronounce? Maybe for English speakers, because the E sound is really peculiar to the French language. Heureux, heureux. Because I'm happy. Parce que je suis heureux. You make me happy. Tu me rends heureux. Ta. Huile d'olive. Olive oil. Really? Huile d'olive. Yeah, it's full of oui, 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 oui. You try it. Huile d'olive. It's a oily sound. Oui. <laughs> I like olive oil. J'aime l'huile d'olive. Pasta with olive oil. Des pâtes à l'huile d'olive. This is delicious. Je. I. 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 Je. It's also the same sound for game. Des jeux. Jeux vidéo. Video games. It's the E sound again. Try it. E. Je vais à la mer. I'm going to the beach. Je voudrais sortir. I would like to go out. Je voudrais sortir. It's again full of... <laughs> it sounds like the French language is made only of vowels. Je voudrais sortir. <laughs> I would like to go out tonight. Je voudrais sortir ce soir. And party! Livre. Book. 
Oh, I see, because for English speaking per people, the R sound is also quite difficult to pronounce in French. Livre, because it's kind of like a motor. J'aime lire des livres. I like reading books. That must be a complicated sentence to say for you guys. Mémoire. Memory. Mémoire. Je n'ai pas de mémoire. I got no memory. Three second memory. <laughs> Trois secondes de mémoire. Merci. Thank you. Merci. Yeah, the E and R sound again. Merci. Don't forget to roll the R a little bit. Ugh. Merci. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. Je vous remercie. I thank you. Kind sir or kind lady. Madam. Mercredi. Wednesday. Mercredi. Have fun trying to pronounce this one. Mercredi. Je fais du sport le mercredi. I do sports on Wednesday. Not true. Quincaillerie. Hardware store. Quincaillerie. Acheter un marteau à la quincaillerie. To buy a hammer at the hardware store. Très bien. Very good. Très bien. Ooh. <laughs> This also must be complicated. Très bien. Try to roll the R sound again. Très bien. You did really good. Tu as très bien fait. If you can pronounce this one, it's très bien. If you can pronounce this one, it's very good. And it's the end. So try to try and pronounce the other word and pay a particular attention to the E sound and R. And we'll see you next time for more words. Don't forget to subscribe and check the website. See you next time. A bientôt. Introduction to French. My name is Alicia and I'm joined by... Hi everyone, I'm Candice. In this lesson you'll learn the basics of French grammar. In some languages, like French, nouns are divided into different classes. For example, French divides nouns into two classes using gender, masculine and feminine. Let's take a look at some masculine nouns. Lit, fromage, Village, livre. Now, feminine nouns. Cuillère, boue, revue, syllabe. There are some rules for learning the gender of French nouns, but they're quite complex. Many consider the designation of gender to be largely arbitrary, so it's likely that you'll just have to memorize them. Okay, so now you know that nouns are divided into gender classes, but why is this important? Learning gender nouns is important for forming sentences in French. For example, li means bed in French, and it's a masculine noun. If you want to refer to the bed in a sentence, however, you need to add le before the noun. Le lit. In fact, if you want to refer to any masculine noun in French, you need to use le or un. Le fromage. Le village. Un livre. On the other hand, we use la and une to refer to feminine nouns. La cuillère, la boue, une revue, une syllabe. Now you know how to refer to nouns in French. Similar to nouns, French verbs can also be separated into different classes. There are three classes of verbs in French and they are Verbs ending in E. Manger, nager, travailler, aimer. Verbs ending in IR. Finir, ralentir, réagir. And verbs ending in RE. Voir and IR. Mourir, recevoir, lire. Each class of verbs will be conjugated differently when used in a sentence. Let's take a look at a few examples to see how they differ. To swim is nager in French, and it comes from the first group because it ends in E. I swim in the present tense would be... Je nage, 
past tense would be Je nageais. And the future tense would be Je nagerai. Let's compare that to a verb in group two. To finish is finir in French. And it comes from the second group because it ends in ir. Je finis. Je finissais. Je finirai. Finally, a verb from group three. To read is lire in French. And it comes from the third group because it ends with re. Je lis. Je lisais. Je lirai. We'll teach you how to properly conjugate verbs of different classes in future lessons. For now, just know that there are three different categories of verbs in French. Okay, now you know about nouns and verbs in French. Let's learn how to form basic sentences in French. Forming sentences in French is quite simple, especially for English speakers, as French uses the same word order as English. Consider the following example. Le garçon mange un gâteau. In English, this sentence means, the boy eats a cake. If we break down the French sentence, we can see that the order matches the English sentence one-to-one. -one. Le, de, garçon, boy, mange, eats, un, e, gâteau, cake. We can create basic sentences in French simply by exchanging English words for French words. Notice how we use un here, because gâteau is a masculine noun. If the object had been a feminine noun, we'd have used une instead. We can create any basic sentence in French by starting with a subject, in this case, the boy. Le garçon. Then follow it with a verb, eats, Mange. And finally, end with the object, the cake. Un gâteau. As you can see, the word order in French is just like English. Finally, let's learn how to create negative sentences in French. Negating sentences in French is simple. Simply add ne before the verb and pas after it. J'ai. Je n'ai pas. J'aime lire. Je n'aime pas lire. Juliette mange. Juliette ne mange pas. You can negate any basic sentence in French this way. Well done. Let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. In this lesson, you learned that French nouns are divided into two classes, masculine and feminine. Similar to nouns, French verbs are divided into three groups. French uses the same subject, verb, object, word order like English. And finally, you learned how to negate sentences in French. We've covered only the very basics of French grammar. If you're interested in learning more, check out our French in 3 Minutes video series. In that course, we teach you useful phrases while covering the fundamentals of French grammar, and each lesson is only 3 minutes long. In the next lesson, we'll introduce you to the basics of French writing. See you in the next lesson. Bye! Bye! Hi everyone, I'm Leah from FrenchPod101.com. Do you know how to say I love you in French? In this lesson, you will learn three different ways to say I love you and a special phrase for Valentine's Day. Let's go! So the most normal way to confess to someone you do know would be Je t'aime. Je t'aime. Je t'aime. I love you. This phrase is direct. You should use it only when confessing your love. If you want to be less direct, you can use this phrase. Tu comptes tant pour moi. Tu comptes tant pour moi. It means you mean so much to me. Tu comptes tant pour moi. <laughs> now, if you want to be more romantic in expressing your love for someone, you can say this phrase. Les mots ne peuvent pas décrire mon amour pour toi. Les mots ne peuvent pas décrire mon amour pour toi. It means, words can't describe my love for you. Cheesy. Now you know three different ways to say I love you in French. And here is one more. What if you want to spend Valentine's Day with someone special? 
In that case, say this phrase. If it's a girl, you can say Veux-tu être ma Valentine? And if it's a boy, you can say Veux-tu être mon Valentin? Will you be my Valentine? Veux-tu être ma Valentine? Veux-tu être mon Valentin? If you want to ask formally, you can say Voulez-vous être mon Valentin? Or Voulez-vous être ma Valentine? Let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. Listen to the expression and repeat after me. I love you. Je t'aime. Je t'aime. You mean so much to me. Tu comptes tant pour moi. Tu comptes tant pour moi. Words can describe my love for you. Les mots ne peuvent pas décrire mon amour pour toi. Les mots ne peuvent pas décrire mon amour pour toi. Will you be my Valentine? Veux-tu être ma Valentine? Or, veux-tu être mon Valentin? Veux-tu être ma Valentine? Or, veux-tu être mon Valentin? Well done! Did you know that on Valentine's Day, many shops in France are decorated in red or rouge? and pink or rose. Couples also give each other weekends away or trips to take together. Perfume is also a very popular gift on Valentine's Day. You just learned how to say I love you in three different ways in French and a special phrase for Valentine's Day. If you're interested in learning more, don't forget to download your free Romance and Love Cheat Sheet, which includes Romance words, compliments and pick-up lines. Check out the description below and go to frenchpod101.com now. I'll see you next time et à très bientôt. Bye bye. Bye bye. Learn. Hi everyone, I'm Gabriella. How are your French listening skills? In this video, you'll have a chance to test them out with a quiz. First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Une dame demande un renseignement au libraire. Quel livre voulez voir la dame? Excusez-moi, je voudrais jeter un œil sur ce livre sur cette étagère. Quel livre voulez-vous Le livre sur les voitures. Un moment, s'il vous plaît. Celui-ci C'est ça. Et voilà. Quel livre voulez voir la dame Une dame demande un renseignement au libraire. Quel livre voulez voir la dame Excusez-moi, je voudrais jeter un œil sur ce livre sur cette étagère. Quel livre voulez-vous Le livre sur les voitures. Un moment, s'il vous plaît. Celui-ci C'est ça. Et voilà. Did you get it right I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. Welcome back to Top Words. And this week will be about top 15 questions you should know. So if you travel in France, pay attention to those. Aimes-tu la cuisine française? Do you like French food? So if you are invited somewhere, usually people have this question. Aimes-tu la cuisine française? Do you like French food? Oh, aimes-tu la cuisine française? Yeah, sure, I love it. <laughs> so, do you like French food? C'est quand votre anniversaire? When is your birthday? Quand est ton anniversaire? If you want to be a bit casual. Ou quand est ton anniversaire? When is your birthday? Combien de temps as-tu appris le français? 
How long have you been studying French? Combien de temps as-tu appris le français? Or, pendant combien de temps as-tu appris le français? Usually we say, pendant combien de temps? I'm sorry if I speak really fast, but French people usually speak really fast. For three months. Wow, you're good. Comment t'appelles-tu? What's your name? You will hear this one a lot. So, comment t'appelles-tu? Or, more casually will be, comment tu t'appelles? Comment vas-tu? How are you? Comment vas-tu? How are you? Hey, bonjour, comment vas-tu? Or, you will often hear, comment ça va? Hey, comment ça va? D'où venez-vous? Where are you from? D'où venez-vous? Where do you come from? And just answer where you come from. I'm from America. <laughs> French people often make jokes about English speaking people, so prove them wrong by answering in French and you will impress them really much. That would be so great. <laughs> so try it. Es-tu déjà allé en France? Have you been to France? Well, aller is go. So if you are already in France when answering this, it would be Es-tu déjà venu en France? Which is Did you ever come to France? With a notion of Did you ever come before? Or is it your first time? Maybe you will also hear this one Is it your first time in France? Ou Est-ce que c'est ta première fois en France? Où as-tu appris le français? Where did you learn French? Où as-tu appris le français? Where did you learn French? On French Pod 101 <laughs> With me! Yeah, where did you learn French? Leave me a comment below. Maybe in your home country or on the internet or did you study it more seriously in school? So just tell me. Où habitez-vous? Where do you live? I used to live in the south. So between Spain and Italy. It was a nice place full of sun and everything. You should check it out. So come to the south of France. It's sunny. Où sont les toilettes? Where is the bathroom? Où sont les toilettes? You will need this one in a restaurant. Toilette is a plural word in French. We used to make a joke that French toilets are so dirty that you have to check many of them before finding a decent one. That's why it's a plural name. Some toilets you have to pay to access them actually in public places. So be careful. Sometimes you need a coin, especially in stations like train stations. Où travaillez-vous? Where do you work? Où travaillez-vous? Where do you work? I work on the internet. It's a worldwide place. So, and after this one, usually you will be asked, what do you work in? Or what's your job? Quel est ton travail? Ou dans quoi travailles-tu? Here you go. Qu'avez-vous dit? What did you say? Qu'avez-vous dit? Or you will often hear, pardon? Or excuse me? Like, I'm sorry, like I didn't catch you. So, pardon, excusez-moi. Or, can you repeat? Pouvez-vous répéter? So, if French people say that to you, just try and repeating what you said. Qu'est-ce que c'est? What is this? <gasps> Qu'est-ce que c'est? I don't know. Show them something fancy for your own country and tell them. And they will ask, oh, qu'est-ce que c'est? Quel est ton numéro de téléphone? What's your phone number? Quel est ton numéro de téléphone? What's your phone number? This is a pickup line. Hey, Ooh. what's your phone number? Quel est ton numéro de téléphone? Ah, oh, yeah, maybe they will ask for your pseudo, which is your ID in any web messaging service. Es-tu célibataire? Are you single? And if you are traveling to France and happen to find love, maybe you will be asked, are you single? Es-tu célibataire? Or maybe the other sneaky way around. Est-ce que tu as un copain ou est-ce que tu as une copine? Do you have a boyfriend or do you have a girlfriend? So maybe you will find French love in France. Who knows? And it's the end for this week. Don't forget to subscribe for more and don't forget to check the website if you want to know more about French. And see you next time. À bientôt. Oh. Oh. Ah. Quoi? Welcome to Introduction to French. My name is Alicia, and I'm joined by... Hi, everyone. I'm Candice.
In this lesson, you'll learn the basics of French pronunciation. In the previous lesson, you learned that roughly 30% of all English words share their origins with French words. Because of this, French pronunciation is quite similar to English. In fact, there are more common sounds than there are different ones. For example, bou, sandwich, dain, gain. Chances are you can imitate these words without much difficulty because these words use common sounds that exist in English. Of course, there are a few differences between French and English sounds too. Agneau, roux, huit, sans. These unfamiliar sounds are the ones that you need to focus on and practice. Let's take a look at some of those sounds. A big aspect of French pronunciation relates to nasalization. Nasalization simply means to pronounce something through the nose. For example, the M and N sounds are considered nasal consonants because the air escapes your nose when you pronounce these sounds. Mm. Mm. In French, some vowels can be pronounced through the mouth or through the nose. Compare oral vowels with nasal vowels in French. Une, un, son, son, certain, certain. Nasal vowels are used often in French, so it's important that you learn them in the near future. Another unique French sound is the guttural R sound. R, roux, rester, ri. This R sound is pronounced at the back of the mouth. It sounds almost as if you're gargling. <sighs> Lastly, let's take a look at the French U sound. U, chute, rue, tu. To pronounce this sound, try saying E as in C. And then from there, slowly run your lips. U. French is renowned for being a language full of silent letters, particularly at the end of words. Consider the following. Je vais manger au restaurant. The S in the word VE, the R in the word manger, and the T at the end of restaurant are all silent letters. We don't actually pronounce them in French. Listen to it again. Je vais manger au restaurant. In fact, most of the time, the last letter of a French word is actually silent. Coup, froid, vous. There are, of course, exceptions to this rule. Let's look at the most common case when the next word starts with a vowel. Ordinarily, the final letter of a French word is silent. Vous. The final S in this word is silent, but when the next word begins with a vowel, vous avez. The S is no longer silent and is instead pronounced like a Z sound. Vous avez. The two words are connected by the Z sound and pronounced as if they were a single word. This linking of words through the activation of the silent letter is a common phenomenon in French known as liaison. It's the special quality which makes French sound the way that it does. Let's look at a few more examples of liaison in action. Tout. Tout homme, un, un ami, neuf, neuf ans, gentil, gentil enfant. Liaisons may seem a little difficult to learn at first, but they will only get easier and more intuitive by the time you get used to pronouncing whole sentences in French. Okay, let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. In this lesson, you learned that there are more familiar sounds than unfamiliar sounds in French. We showed you some unfamiliar sounds like nasal vowels, the guttural R, and the French U. You also learned that the final letter in a French word is usually silent, and that the letter becomes active if the next word starts with a vowel. This process is known as liaison. We've covered only the basics of French pronunciation. If you're interested in learning more, check out the entire course we created, named The Ultimate Guide to French Pronunciation. In that course, we cover and break down every single sound in the French language, showing you mouth and tongue positioning and giving you tips to help you perfect your French pronunciation. 
In the next lesson, we'll introduce you to the basics of French grammar, where you'll learn about French word order and how to build basic phrases in French. See you in the next lesson. Bye. Bye. Hey, watchers. This week, we're going to learn about top 25 French phrases. Let's go. Bonjour. Bonjour is hello. Bonjour. 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 Hey. Okay, now you can say bonjour any time of the day, even if it's night. Salut. Hi. Hi is uh, salut. Salut, comment ça va? Hey, how you doing? So, salut is like bonjour, and you can also use it to say hi and to say goodbye. So when you leave, you can also say salut, à la prochaine. Ça va. How are you? You can say ça va, like just after salut, ça va. Or bonjour, ça va. Or comment ça va? If you only say ça va, it's kind of missing something, so put it after a greeting. So, how are you? How you doing? Comment ça va? Bonsoir. Good evening. Not good night. Almost good night, but not. Bonsoir is also a greeting you can use when you leave or when you enter someone's place. For example, if you go in the evening to someone's house for a party, you can say, ah, bonsoir tout le monde. Bonne nuit. Good night. Good night is bonne nuit. Person sleeping next to you. Bonne nuit. Or to your family when you go to sleep. Oui. Yes. Yeah. Oui. You also say, yeah, maybe you heard, oui, oui, like French people often do this, oui, oui. It's also a cartoon for children, oui, oui, and his little car. You should try and watch it in French, it's very educative. Non, 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 <laughs> you have oui, oui, and non, non. We often say them both, just use yes and no, oui et non. Je m'appelle, my name is, je m'appelle Lia. You knew that already, huh? What's your name? Leave it in the comments in French. S'il vous plaît, please. Please, s'il vous plaît. This is a polite version, and if you want the more friendly version, is s'il te plaît, if you are asking your friend. S'il te plaît, give me your candy, I'm starving. S'il te plaît, donne-moi des bonbons. L'addition, s'il vous plaît. D'accord, okay. So, we also use okay, but with a French accent. Okay. Hi, how are you doing? When you come to the cinema with me? D'accord. Excusez-moi. Excuse me. If someone is blocking the way, you just say, excusez-moi. Merci. Thank you. Please learn this one and be polite. In French, we just have merci. There is no short version of it, and you can use it for anyone. So when you receive something at the grocery store, ah, merci. Or when someone does you a favor, ah, merci. If you want to be really polite or really thankful, you can say merci beaucoup. Thanks a lot. De rien. So you are welcome. If someone says merci to you, you can just say, ah, de rien. So merci et de rien. Those come in a pair, so blend them together. It's nice. Il est quelle heure? What time is it? Or, quelle heure il est? You will more often hear the second version. So, oh, excusez-moi, quelle heure il est? Excuse me, what time is it? Où sont les toilettes? Where is the bathroom? We don't have many available bathrooms in public places, and usually they are really dirty. So, or maybe if you are at someone's house, you can ask, où sont les toilettes? Enchanté, nice to meet you. Bonjour, enchanté, je m'appelle Lia. And here you have three of today's verbs together. Isn't it nice? Bonjour, je m'appelle Lia, enchanté, comment ça va? Hi, nice to meet you, my name is Lia. How are you doing? <laughs> and you have all of them to greet people and start a live conversation. So, nice to meet you, enchanté. À bientôt, see you soon. This is what I should say at the end of each video. See you soon, or à bientôt. Use it when you leave. That's about it. À demain. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. À demain. Yeah. Au revoir. Bye bye, or goodbye. Au revoir is kind of polite. You can use it with everyone as well. So if you want to be more friendly, we use like ciao. Au revoir is only for leaving. So, so yeah, goodbye. Goodbye, watchers. See you next time. A bientôt. <laughs> no, not yet, because I'm going to see you guys a lot. Bien sûr. Of course. Bien sûr que c'est le cas. If you want to be sarcastic, you can say, oui, bien sûr. We mostly use it this way, because we like being sarcastic. So, yeah, of course. Yes, yes, you are. Yes. Je peux utiliser. Oh, may I use? 
sentences in. So fill the blank with whatever you want. Can I use your pencil? Je peux utiliser ce stylo? Oui, oui. Je suis désolé. I'm sorry. Ah, yeah, if you bump into someone, you can also use this one. Like, oh, je suis désolé. If I bump into somebody, they won't wake up there. Moon don't go where it pleases. Yeah. Terminator is more like this. I'm sorry. Je suis désolé. Pourquoi? Why? Why? Pourquoi? C'est vrai? Really? C'est vrai? C'est vrai? Oh, man. So, if you are hearing gossip and stuff, you can be like, oh, c'est vrai? No. No. C'est vrai? Oh, c'est vrai? Really? Yeah. And you can use it with all the intonations. C'est vrai? C'est vrai. So the opposite of c'est vrai is c'est pas vrai. No, it's not. Or not really. Je ne comprends pas. I don't understand. Lia never understand. Lia say her name a lot. Or else she forgets. Happened before. When someone is speaking too fast, like I do, I'm sorry, je suis désolé. You can tell them je ne comprends pas. Or... Yeah, because they have all those fancy French words and vocabulary. You can be like, no, je ne comprends pas. Et the end. So remember those main sentences and don't forget to subscribe and leave me a comment if you ne comprends pas. Bye bye. Au revoir et à bientôt. Please stop it. I'm waving. In this video, you learn 20 of the most common words and phrases in French. Hi everybody, my name is Leah. Welcome to the 800 core French words and phrases video series. This series will teach you the 800 most common words and phrases in French. But there is a twist. With each new lesson in this series, we'll include the previous lessons at the end. So after you've learned the new words and phrases, stick around and review what you've learned in previous lessons. Reviewing is one of the most important parts of learning a language. You can also get the full list right now at frenchpod101.com. Click the link in the description to access more example sentences, create your own flashcard deck, and finally master French. Okay, let's get started. First is... Bonjour. Hello. Bonjour. Bonjour. Hello. Quand je rencontre une personne, je dis bonjour. When I meet someone, I say hello. Quand je rencontre une personne, je dis bonjour. Bon après-midi. Have a nice afternoon. Bon après-midi. Bon après-midi. Have a nice afternoon. Bon après-midi, mademoiselle. Have a nice afternoon, miss. Bon après-midi, mademoiselle. Bonsoir. Good evening. Bonsoir. Bonsoir. Good evening. Bonsoir, bienvenue. Good evening, welcome. Bonsoir. Bienvenue. Bonne nuit. Good night. Bonne nuit. Bonne nuit. Good night. Bonne nuit, mon ami. Good night, my friend. Bonne nuit, mon ami. Enchanté de vous rencontrer. Nice to meet you. Enchanté de vous rencontrer. Enchanté de vous rencontrer. Nice to meet you. Enchanté de vous rencontrer, monsieur. Nice to meet you, sir. Enchanté de vous rencontrer, monsieur. Comment vas-tu? How are you? Comment vas-tu? Comment vas-tu? How are you? Ça fait longtemps. Comment vas-tu? 
It's been a long time. How are you? Ça fait longtemps. Comment vas-tu? Oui. Yes. Oui. Oui. Yes. Oui, s'il vous plaît. Yes, please. Oui, s'il vous plaît. Non. No. Non. Non. No. Non merci. No thanks. Non merci. Merci. Thank you. Merci. Merci. Thank you. Merci beaucoup pour l'invitation. Thank you very much for the invitation. Merci beaucoup pour l'invitation. Je m'appelle. I'm. Je m'appelle. Je m'appelle. I'm. Je m'appelle John. I'm John. Je m'appelle John. Au revoir. Goodbye. Au revoir. Au revoir. Goodbye. Au revoir, à bientôt. Goodbye, see you soon. Au revoir, à bientôt. Mauvais. Bad. Mauvais. Mauvais. Bad. C'est un mauvais garçon. He is a bad boy. C'est un mauvais garçon. Bon. Good. Bon. Bon. Good. Les légumes sont bons pour vous. Vegetables are good for you. Les légumes sont bons pour vous. Belle. Beautiful. Belle. Belle. Beautiful. Très beau. Very beautiful. Très beau. Les. Ugly. Les. Les. Ugly. Visage laid. Ugly face. Visage laid. Facile. Easy. Facile. Facile. Easy. Ce problème est facile. This problem is easy. Ce problème est facile. Difficile. Difficult. Difficile. Difficile. Difficult. Très difficile. Very difficult. Très difficile. 
près de. Near. Près de. Près de. Near. Je vis près de l'université. I live near the university. Je vis près de l'université. Loin. Far. Loin. Loin. Far. La gare est loin d'ici. The station is far from here. La gare est loin d'ici. Petit. Small. Petit. Petit. Small. Ce pull est trop petit. The sweater is too small. Ce pull est trop petit. Remember, the goal of this series is to build the vocabulary of the 800 most common words and phrases in French. If that sounds like a lot, don't worry, we can help you. Click the link in the description to access the full list. You will also get example sentences, custom flashcard decks, and more learning resources at FrenchPod101.com. See you next time! Au revoir! Hi everybody, Candice here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I answer some of your most common French questions. The question for this lesson is, how can you tell if a noun is masculine or feminine? In French, every noun has a gender. That goes for plural nouns too, like apples and oranges. Other Romance languages have masculine and feminine nouns too. It's a trait that comes from Latin, and the gender depends on the origin of the older Latin word. English doesn't have masculine or feminine nouns, so the easiest way to tell the gender of a French noun is by looking at the last letter of the noun. The general rule is that if a noun ends with an E, it's feminine. For example, la lettre, meaning the letter, la veste, meaning the jacket, and la fraise, meaning the strawberry. Nouns that end with any other letter are generally masculine, like le croissant, the croissant, le mec, which means the guy, or le bijou, meaning the jewel. The only thing is, there are lots of exceptions. For example, le fromage, meaning cheese, is masculine, even though it ends with an E. Another example is voix, meaning voice. This word is feminine, even though it doesn't end with an E, so it's la voix. Because there are so many exceptions to the general pattern, it's best to learn nouns and their articles together. That's le or un for masculine nouns and la or une for feminine nouns. Le and la are like the article de in English. Un or une are similar to a. Although a for feminine nouns and any other letters for masculine nouns are the most common ways to determine the gender of a noun in French, a few other letter patterns sometimes apply. Some masculine endings are age, like le fromage, or cheese, ment, like le document, or document, o, like un oiseau, or bird, and war, like le miroir, or the mirror. If you see these letter patterns when you're studying French, it's safe to assume those nouns are masculine. Some feminine patterns are sion, or chen, like la nation, meaning the nation, t, like la liberté, or liberty, and eus, like la chanteuse, or the singer. Just like with the masculine letter patterns I just mentioned, you can assume that words ending with these letter patterns are feminine. 
It's important to remember what gender a noun is because sometimes it influences other parts of the sentence in French. For example, adjectives change their spelling according to the gender of the noun they modify. It looks a bit like this. The blue notebook, which is masculine, is le cahier bleu. The blue chair, which is feminine, is la chaise bleue, with an extra e. And that's it. I hope that answers your question. If you have any more questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. À bientôt. See you soon. Hi everyone, and welcome to the Ultimate French Pronunciation Guide. In this lesson, you'll learn the top five French pronunciation mistakes to avoid. These are common mistakes that French learners tend to make, so pay close attention and make sure that you don't make these same mistakes too. Are you ready? Then let's get started. Number one, mispronouncing the French R. <sighs> The French R is the most difficult sound to pronounce properly for many students of French, particularly when there isn't a similar sound in the student's own language. It's also a very common letter in French, so it will appear often in everyday conversations. Take, for example, Lorsque tu arrives à la gare, appelle-moi. It's kind of deceptive to think of the French R in the same way as the English R, just because they are written in the same way. They clearly don't sound the same at all. Not only this, but they also use different muscles in the mouth. The French R is also called a guttural R because it's pronounced closer to the throat. Don't worry about the specifics now, however. We'll break this sound down in detail in lesson seven. Number two, pronouncing a silent letter. It's a common mistake for students of French to pronounce silent letters because the tendency is to pronounce everything that one sees. The French language, however, is full of words that contain silent letters, particularly at the end of a word. It is, in fact, more common for a French word to have a silent letter than none at all. Take, for example, Je vais pêcher au port. Did you catch the silent letters in this sentence? Notice how Miley's did not pronounce the S in the T. Listen to it again. Je vais pêcher au port. Most of the time, you don't need to pronounce the last letter of a word in French. There are, of course, some exceptions to this rule particularly if the following word starts with a vowel sound, or if the word ends with a C, F, or an L. But as a general principle, it's quite common to drop the last letter, as it will most likely be a silent letter. We'll cover silent letters in detail in lesson eight. Number three, aspirated H's versus muted H's. N, hôpital. Aspirated H's will not allow contractions or liaisons to occur in front of it. For example, len, la n, whereas muted H's will, l'hôpital. Most French H's are of this muted variety. They're not interchangeable either, so their usage will depend on the word itself. This unfortunately means that you'll just have to learn them individually. Next is number four, contractions in French. Unlike English, contractions are not optional in French. You must always contract words wherever possible. For example, Je appelé, j'appelle, ce est, c'est, de le, du, de les, des, don't worry about the rules and principles for contractions too much, though, as we'll cover them in detail in lesson eight. And finally, number five, the French U. U. The French U is typically a difficult vowel sound for many speakers to pronounce correctly, particularly for speakers of English, because there isn't an equivalent sound in the English language. Whatever you do, though, do not substitute this sound for the English U sound. A simple way to produce the French U is to first try and pronounce the double E sound in the word C. From this position, simply round your lips as if you were about to whistle. And that's all there is to it. Try it.
U. Let's listen to a few examples which utilize the French U in some words. Tu. Rue. Chute. We'll cover this vowel sound again in lesson four. Now you know the top five French pronunciation mistakes to avoid. Try to be careful so that you don't commit these same mistakes. In the next lesson, we'll start learning vowel sounds in French. Which of these five mistakes is the hardest to avoid? Have you learned any tricks to deal with them? Let us know in the comments. Stick with us and you'll overcome it quickly. See you in the next Ultimate French Pronunciation Guide lesson. In this video, you learn 20 of the most common words and phrases in French. Hi everybody, my name is Lia. Welcome to the 800 core French words and phrases video series. This series will teach you the 800 most common words and phrases in French. But there is a twist. With each new lesson in this series, we'll include the previous lessons at the end. So after you've learned the new words and phrases, stick around and review what you learned in previous lessons. Reviewing is one of the most important parts of learning a language. You can also get the full list right now at frenchpod101.com. Click the link in the description to access more example sentences, create your own flashcard deck, and finally master French. Okay, let's get started. First is... Brosser Brush Brosser Brosser Brush. Se brosser les cheveux. To brush your hair. Se brosser les cheveux. Doucher. Shower. Doucher. Doucher. Shower. Je me douche le matin. I take a shower in the mornings. Je me douche le matin. Laver. Wash. Laver. Laver. Wash. Laver les vêtements. Wash the clothes. Laver les vêtements. Partir. Leave. Partir. Partir. Leave. Je pars maintenant. I'm leaving now. Je pars maintenant. Check. 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 Puis-je avoir le chèque, s'il vous plaît? Could I get the check, please? Puis-je avoir le chèque, s'il vous plaît? 66. 66 66 66 66 J'ai couru pendant 66 minutes. I ran for 66 minutes. J'ai couru pendant 66 minutes. 77 77 Soixante-dix-sept. Soixante-dix-sept. Seventy-seven. Le numéro de sa porte est le soixante-dix-sept. His door number is seventy-seven. Le numéro de sa porte est le soixante-dix-sept. 88 88 88 
88. L'entreprise compte 88 employés. The company has 88 employees. L'entreprise compte 88 employés. 99. 99. 99. 99. 99. Son grand-père a 99 ans. His grandfather is 99 years old. Son grand-père a 99 ans. 100. 100. 100. 100. 100. C'est 100 euros. It's 100 euros. C'est 100 euros. Salle de séjour. Living room. Salle de séjour. Salle de séjour. Living room. Allons prendre le thé dans la salle de séjour. Let's have some tea in the living room. Allons prendre le thé dans la salle de séjour. Salle à manger. Dining room. Salle à manger. Salle à manger. Dining room. La salle à manger est à côté de la cuisine. The dining room is next to the kitchen. La salle à manger est à côté de la cuisine. Couloir. Hallway. Couloir. Couloir. Hallway. Ne cours pas dans les couloirs. Don't run in the hallways. Ne cours pas dans les couloirs. Appartement. Apartment. Appartement. Appartement. Apartment. Nous devons libérer l'appartement. We have to vacate the apartment. Nous devons libérer l'appartement. Maison. House. Maison. Maison. House. C'est une jolie maison. It's a beautiful house. C'est une jolie maison. Exercice. Exercise. Exercice. Exercice. Exercise. Le professeur corse cet exercice. The teacher makes the exercise more difficult. Le professeur Corse cet exercice. Ouvert. Open. Ouvert. Ouvert. Open. Jusqu'à quelle heure êtes-vous ouvert? How late are you open until? Jusqu'à quelle heure êtes-vous Ouvert. Écoutez. Listen. Écoutez. Écoutez. Listen. 
J'aime écouter la radio avant d'aller dormir. I like to listen to the radio before going to sleep. J'aime écouter la radio avant d'aller dormir. Anniversaire. Birthday. Anniversaire. Anniversaire. Birthday. Je vais à une fête d'anniversaire ce soir. I'm going to a birthday party this evening. Je vais à une fête d'anniversaire ce soir. Prendre sa retraite. Retire. Prendre sa retraite. Prendre sa retraite. Retire. Mon père va prendre sa retraite l'année prochaine. My father is going to retire next year. Mon père va prendre sa retraite l'année prochaine. Well done! In this lesson, you expanded your vocabulary and learned 20 new useful words. Click the link in the description and sign up for free at frenchpod101.com to get access to the full list of vocabulary you need for daily life conversation. You also get example sentences, custom flashcard decks, and more learning resources. See you next time! Au revoir! Remember, here's what you can do to learn all of these words by heart. Drill these words with our spaced repetition flashcards, which will help cement these words into your long-term memory. Save them to the word bank, your personal vocabulary collection, where you can print out your own study sheets, or review the words with our looped vocabulary slideshow, and play it until you know all of the words. So click the link in the description right now and sign up for your free lifetime account to get these lessons and study tools.